All right, what is up, Delaware County? And welcome back for episode number 54 of Delco Baseball Now. My name is Brendan Ricciardi. I'm joined by Ben Thorpe. Obviously, we are not in studio right now. We do have two great interviews with Pencrest and Garner Valley. Those were recorded in the studio. Just based on the time we had, we were only really able to get those interviews in. uh, And then we figured we kind of wrapped the rest of the show up on Zoom. So this is being recorded on Sunday nights. Ben, we had, uh, in not a lot of days, we had a lot of action. Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, rare weekend action, I would say. That was, uh, you don't normally get that. Uh, especially not conference games on a weekend. Yeah, I I can't remember the last time I've seen, uh, at least like Central League-wise, I don't think I've ever seen Central League games on weekends. That was a, it was shocking, it was shocking to see like how many. I guess like the rain obviously does what it does. That's, that's m- mostly the reason, but still surprising. Yeah. Yeah, I think my senior year, we played Ridley on a Saturday, but same thing. It was because rain pushed it back, so we didn't really have a choice. But to yeah. have 10 games on a Saturday is hilarious. It's a big, big slate. Mm-hmm. But uh, we got a good show on hand. Like I mentioned, Pencrest and Garner Valley. We got Gavin Brown, Nico Tazi, and Ben Etienne for Pencrest. We got uh, Mark Zuppo, Eddie Swordinevich, and uh, who am I blanking on? Jack Krausel, uh for our Garner Valley guys. So that'll be a little bit later on. But we got to start off. As always here, we got to start off talking about the game of the week presented by Five Star Hiring. So tell you a little bit about them real quick. They are a trusted teammate of employers and student athletes, whether you're a business looking to add the best talent, whether you're a student athlete looking for uh, corporate opportunities, you know, after you graduate or just a coach who wants to kind of prepare you for success, like after your college um, career ends, reach out to Five Star Hiring to learn more about how they can assist you. He also goes out to different universities. I think he's flying out to Wisconsin to do something for a, uh, a school out there. Uh, you can reach out at fivestarhiring.net. That's the website at Five Star Hiring on LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. Our guy, James Grugan, he, I believe his kids go to Ridley. I don't think that they play baseball, but baseball fans, uh, he's a great guy. And it just seems like a great kind of partnership because at the end of the day, you know, we want sponsors that kind of fit our target audience and doesn't really get more target audience than trying to benefit student athletes. Yeah. I mean, that this is the, I would say like most of our target audience, you know, we, we have a lot of student athletes, which whatever level they may be on right now. And uh, it's cool to see, like, I think like the, his commitment to the, his mission and just kind of like being able to go out and help people get hired because as, uh, you and I both know it's, can be a difficult thing finding a job, especially once you get out of college or get out of high school or whatever. Like it, it's cool to see like someone's doing that. And I think it's a really awesome partnership. Absolutely. Uh, and you know, I, I think it's cool to have like, you know, almost like a mentor type thing. Like there's a lot of things that you're not taught necessarily in a school classroom about what it's like kind of transitioning into the adult world, like the accountability, the responsibility, the team, the teamwork you have to have time management, like all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we're very happy to have James on board, our game sure. of the week. Uh, so let's talk about this game here. It was Harrington versus Radner. It was two great pitchers going at it. It was a chilly, windy day. It was at Maple Zone. Foul balls going from one field onto the other <laughs> the entire time. Uh, and as the resident pitcher of the show, I would like you to start off talking about what we saw just from Harrington's Charlie Belli and Pencrest Gavin Brown here. Yeah, I mean, just a lot of good stuff from both, really. I think a little bit cold day, so it's – not always like the crazy velocity, but I think, you know, both guys really showed an ability to throw multiple pitches for th- strikes, attack the zone with a fastball. And I don't know, you, you could just see like both offenses having a pretty hard time figuring out either guy. Yeah. Yeah. It took until I think Pentrest scored five in the fifth inning. I'm yeah. pretty sure, which I thought was funny. There was five runs, fifth inning for the first five star game of the week. Nice little, uh, little, little baseball. Nice. Baseball. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, I believe in this game. I think the the moment that really you know stole the momentum was when Josh Kalinowski had a sack bunt and Harry Giles scored from second base. And you know just the fact that he, if you hesitate on that, you're done. He yeah. knew the second that that play was called that if that bunt gets down in fair territory, that he's going. And and it worked out. And they used that momentum. They added another single. They added a two run single from Ben Etienne. They really kind of just you know took it under control. And they were able to get Gavin Brown out after five and then let Kalinowski do the rest. Uh, and I have to give a huge shout out for the Pencrest guys for chirping us because that is the energy <laughs> we're looking for. Like, I would like to make it emphatically clear that that is what we want. Like, we want you to use us as fuel, use us as motivation or set out to prove us right. You know, if we yeah. had you on the rankings at some point, you know, you're, you're trying to make us look good. 
which we appreciate. But like that's a team that, you know, really embraces the Delco baseball now culture, it feels like. Yeah, no, definitely. It seems I mean, you know, I guess you kind of get into a little bit in the interview but talking to them they could see like they they're following all this stuff it's it's cool to see and i don't know it, that's a i've been really impressed with seeing them i know i just got back from watching them play springfield like another impressive outing from them um they, they just seem like a tough team to play against like just someone that you know maybe not the most like you know on paper talented like all this stuff but like just a team that like when you see them on the schedule you're just kind of like oh like we gotta go that's just not – it's not going to be a fun game. They they almost feel like the team that plays the most, like, Delco brand of baseball. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, it's a little bit of everything. Like, there's like there's a lot of grit. Like, there's some speed, like, good hitting, pretty decent defense, like, pitching. There. It's just, like, a very really, – like, all around and just, like, a tough team. Yeah, the Delco, it's, like, the playing with emotion, the chirping, the almost, yeah. almost anger. Like, playing angry is almost how it seems they feel like. And as we'll talk about in the interview, we were, we were wondering if we start to show them more love, will they take the foot <laughs> off the gas? Because they're like, oh, who do we have to, you know, prove anymore? Um, I don't yeah. think they will. I think they're – they seem – well, they bought into <laughs> some of what we were saying. I think they seem like a very, like, self-motivated team as well. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, great win for them. What did you see in that? Um, we'll go out of order a little bit, just while we're on the topic of Pencrest in that game today. Um, I mean, so I won, like, the depth of their pitching. I mean, so I got to see Michael Shade, who was uh, – he did well. Like, I think he kept the Springfield hitters off balance, um, did a really good job of that. I think he threw a lot of really good off-speed pitches. Not a guy who's going to completely, like, dominate a lineup, like, Velo, maybe like Velo-wise or with a fastball. I would assume – I mean, I was kind of far away. I would probably call it, like, low 80s. Um, but like spots it spots, a slider slur of curveball type thing. Like he looked really good. I mean, didn't really come under a crazy amount of pressure, I think. And just got a lot of weak contact. I think like as a number two, that's as like, that's as good as you like really could hope for. Yeah, and we kind of assumed going into the year that Kalinowski would be their number two. But as we talked about in the interview, he's much more suited for like that relief role after Gavin. Uh, I actually got to coach, so I coached for on deck a couple games in the summer, just like filling in different age groups. And I, I saw Shade pitch, and I think he, he either had a broken or sprained finger, like something where he's like, I'm going to try and gut this out. And like I knew he was going into a sophomore year Pencrest, and I'm like that, like, you know, that's yeah. uh, especially in a – if I'm not mistaken, I think at that point in the tournament, like I think it was more, it might've even just been a consolation game. Like I, I don't think that I don't, I don't think we could have won the tournament because I only filled in on Sunday, but whatever it was just seeing that mentality where he's like, no, like I'm going to go out and do what I can was, uh was, was very cool. And, you know, seeing that, I mean, he only had two strikeouts, but five shutout innings, like he trusts his defense. And as the guy saying in the interview, they, they really believe in that defense behind them. Yeah, for sure. That's uh, you kind of what you, you spoke to with him in the tournament. Like, you can see it's like just a little bit of like a dog mentality out there. Like he's going to go out, he's got what he's got, and he's going to get you with it. And, yeah, I mean, it's just another impressive outing for them. And, you know, offensively too, again, like just saw tough at-bats one through nine. Like it was five runs. I, I don't know. I forget how many hits. It probably wasn't like their best offensive game ever. But, like, again, just tough at-bats. And they eventually just kind of wore down Springfield and – you know, tacked on one or two every now and then. And you look up, it was 5 nothing, and I guess it fin finished 5-2. But just another, I don't know, just a tough team. Yeah, last thing I'll say about them is they have a huge week. Like, this is like the this is like the measuring stick. Like, they play Marple and Strathaven. Oh, yeah. Two of the best, if not the two best teams in the Central League. Uh, so we'll see how that goes for them. But let's move into the best pitching performance in all of Delco baseball this entire year. Nick Gordon. Through a no hitter, he struck out 15 upper derby hitters. I don't care what team you're playing, that is a absolutely incredible performance. Yeah, absolutely. That's an, another no hitter <laughs> for the area. That's on the year, but that's the first. That's the first individual. Oh yeah, that's a good point. All right, so that's yep. like mind. All right, so he's, he's got the crown for best outing. Then that's yeah, but I mean, yeah, 15 Ks is legit. Like that's uh, like you said, uh, you couldn't have said any better. You know, it doesn't matter who you're playing, like 15K no hitters, Siri. Like, that's that's awesome. And it was uh, it was one of those games where he got better as the game went on. Like, I think mm -hmm. that in, in the last three innings, eight of the nine outs were strikeouts. Like, he just kept 
picking up steam. Uh, he's committed to Penn State Brandywine, so he'll be staying in Delco, which is great. Let's go. And, uh, and you know, if listen, like we talked about, and we even talked about it with Garner Valley later on in the episode, that they're a team where I would – I, I gun to my head, they are the best lineup in the Central League. I stand by that. One through nine, this team is is loaded in the lineup. But losing their top two pitchers, they kind of had to see, like, all right, who's going to be the guys to replace that? And, I mean, it's hard to argue with those results right there. Yeah, man, that's – yeah, really is. And that's – yeah, I, I would agree that that's probably the best lineup in the Central League. And, like, again, like something I think we kind of got on in the interview, but, like, they're, they seem like a team that is going to – get like once that pitching kind of they figure out their guys and maybe like the like starting rotation slash like how you're going to plan out games um and everyone kind of gets comfortable there and then like you know warms up they start swinging like they're going to get dangerous towards the end of the year i think absolutely uh, they also had a nice win over haverford on friday rebounding nice you know they lost that first central league game when they faced van willner and lower marion but we knew that you know that was just like a it was a cold day. Van's a great pitcher. Like we, we still believe in this offense. So good, uh, good two wins by those guys to get things rolling. All right, let's move on to the, the definitely the biggest. I would say the biggest surprise in the mm-hmm. early part of the season. And I, I mean, Cardinal O'Hara not only um, taking down Archbishop Wood on Friday, but going to Father Judge, the defending PCL and six A state champions, and beating them like that is wildly impressive. Yeah, I think that was like. I feel like O'Hara was a team that we just really didn't like one hear anything about. And then kind of because of that to like talk about it, it just seemed very under the radar and, you know, something where it's like, we have no idea how they're going to be this year, but I mean, Wood and judge historically are both very good teams. I feel like, or judge, obviously they, they want to combine they, in the PCL last year, they want to combine 20 and four. Yeah. So like, that's, unbelievable and to go out and win like your first two games against those two teams and two wins and two like pretty convinced like the wood game was close but like not particularly that close i think wood got two hits in the first inning and won the rest of the way like they got shut down for the most part that, that's it's a team to keep an eye on yeah and i think the main reason that we didn't have as much buzz around them is so they were a team that last year you know they're the seventh seed in the pcl they beat care on that first game then they lost to LaSalle. So you look at a team that was the seventh seed in the PCL, loses their best pitcher, Pat Ahern, and their best player, Paul Daly. And yeah. it's like in the early going, they almost took a step forward. Yeah, yeah. I, that was, you know, all signs pointed to – I don't know all signs pointed to, but, like, you know, you're looking at that, you could almost expect a step back. And they have just kept pushing. And, like, good on them. That's awesome to see. Like, we want these Delco teams to keep winning. Might turn like a little O'Hara Bonner game into something. Yes. You literally took the words out of my mouth. Like I, <laughs> I, you know, when we go think about our games of the week throughout the year, right? Like we want to, you know, what, when we do the PCL games, like ideally it's Delco on Delco, right? Like you, you know, as cool as it would be to have like, you know, Bonner versus like a big name, yeah. you know, PCL team like like LaSalle or Judge or whatever. Like it going to Judge and doing a Delco baseball game of the week just doesn't it doesn't have the same like buzz around it, you know. So like like going you know so like going to a bond yeah yeah hundred percent whatever just would would easily be the uh, the most ideal so I'm I'm very excited for that now Noah McMullen was fantastic in that Wood game four and a third uh, three hits one earned run three Ks Kevin King slammed the door two and two thirds nothing yeah, okay. going no hits no runs uh, but the real the real story and this one uh, I would bet this man has the most Irish genes in Delco Patrick <laughs> McManus is oh a, yeah. I mean, holy cow! That that's as uh, that's as Irish as it gets there. And it's it's O'Hara, like, player, like <laughs> yeah, like I saw that name, and I'm just like, man, that is that's like that's a stereotype. Like that's like if Family Guy made like a character that wore like a kilt. That, that's what they <laughs> were. <thinking. laughs> that's just his name. That would yeah. be so perfect. That dude's yeah. gonna run the shit out of like a pub one day. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I I when I tagged him um on like the post on Instagram or whatever, his bio just says, I am him. <laughs> so I was like, All right. I love this guy. That's this guy's unbelievable. Awesome. Yeah, he, uh, I mean, I don't think he was on, I'm going to look at him. I don't think he was on the team last year. So I'm assuming he's either like probably a, uh, uh, I think he's just, yeah, he's a sophomore, right? 26. Okay. Uh, that's just, that's a ridiculous, uh, just character. I am I him. Yeah. Um, give me a quick time. To the uh, to the offense here. I mean, I knew Brendan Till and Kevin McGuire are both ball players. You know, they're at the top of the order. We knew 
they were going to be good. And McMullen added a couple hits as well. So, I mean, this feels like a team where, like, in the PCL, 10 out of 13 teams make the playoffs. Like, not trying to get ahead of myself, but they just beat two of the teams that were in that top three or four last year. So yeah. if they're able to kind of take advantage of the teams that were below them last year, like, they should find themselves maybe even getting that first round by. Yeah, no, for sure. That's – early indications mean anything. Like, they they should be a playoff team and even, like, you know, take a run when they get into it. Absolutely. All right, uh, might be a little boring to talk about, but we'll give Strathaven their flowers again real quick. I mean, they've been, you know, in, in that top spot in the power rankings. Like, this isn't spoiling anything because they still haven't lost, so why would we, you know, move them out of the one spot, right? Um, but, you know, they, they took care of business. They, they beat up on Herodon. I think it was, like, 15 or 16 to 1. They won yep. a close game with Radner. I want to say something about Radner in a sec, but I'll get to that. Uh, the, the main reason that I, I believe that Strathaven really could – go back and win their third district title in four years is because of Caden Schuster, because, you know, our biggest question was going to be like, we knew that that Luke D'Ancona was going to be able to kind of go into that Alex Pock role, like that pitcher where anytime he steps on the mound, you feel like you have a great chance to win. But the question was going to be who is going to replace last year's Luke. If Luke was replacing last year's Alex Pock and Caden, I mean, six shutout innings and one hit is just yeah. a gem for your first conference start. Absolutely. That's a, huge outing for him and you know you have him you have uh matai also and you know zane's probably still going to throw a, a little bit to like you know you're kind of stacking up now that you have you in addition to luke you have you know two to three other very reliable pitchers like coming in behind them yeah but how, how nice is it for you know head coach brian feely to be able to leave zane at short in some of those yeah late yeah you know, if he has like you know, Rob or um, Chris Coglin's healthy now. Jake Kudrick's healthy now. Like they have a lot of arms that that they're you know they've been able to get some experience because in that uh, in that Harrington game they're up early, so they're kind of able to to get these guys some work. Uh, and I'm I'm you know listen, Strathaven alum. Uh, people can call me biased if they want. At the end of the day, like I just root for Delco, uh, but you know still still you know root for the boys. And at the end of the day, also I think that people should kind of expect us to root for our alums, like. I don't think it's yeah, it's not like we're it's not like we're affecting the rankings or like covering them different, you know. Like, am I supposed to sit here and be like, no, I don't want Strathaven to win? Like, come on, like, like yeah, anybody yeah. in any, <laughs> yeah. like you look at any you know ESPN sports talk show, like who do you think Michael Irvin's picking when the Cowboys play, right? Like, you know, it's, yeah, they don't exactly try and hide it, right? So uh, it's like when David Ortiz and A Rod do the ALCS, like when the Red Sox and Yankees play each other, and it's just like, yeah. <laughs> It's like they're not even. Yeah, like what do you what do you think they're gonna say? But uh, yeah, no, great start to the year. I mean, the or, the the lineup has been as I mean, Zane Malarkey had five RBIs in that game. You know, they they lost Pock and Milligan, but really outside of that, man, like Nick Cortor was solid, but Matt Caputo's been good at third, and, and they just feel like a team that you know Jake McDonough is only getting better. Kane, you know, they uh, they I won't say they have the best like pure lineup in the Central League, but I would still argue the best team. Yeah, uh, they just kind of seem like they're going about their business again, which is which is good. It seems like they've kind of like, I don't know, not really a, a lot of – doesn't seem like there's a lot of like problems or anything to figure out right now. They just stepped in, like hit the ground running and just doing their thing again. And uh, It's very impressive, especially yeah. considering like the amount of – maybe not amount, but like the significance of like the guys that they lost. Yeah, and, and if they're problems, they're good problems. You know, yeah. like we choose between and they're both good options type thing. So, yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, big week for them. Uh, they'll play Pencrest on Wednesday. I believe they got uh, Springfield. So Battle of the Pod will be on Monday. Uh, at yeah. With oh, a, yeah. Uh, an eclipse uh, happening. Is, is I'm not a scientist, it's, but uh, I, uh, Chichester canceled their game. I talked to my mom about it. So at 3 p.m., it's supposed to be like 90% eclipse. So it's like it's not going to be full, but so it's going to be like darker, like it's cloudy apparently, but also okay. like you still can't look at the sun. So that's odd, yeah. Because like of, I don't know why it's whatever the thing it does when the moon covers, like maybe it gets brighter or some shit. Science um, pod now. <laughs> what'd you say? Yeah, let's bring on a scientist and and just add <laughs> a the eclipse here. All I know is and it's our, not going to happen for another twenty years. So our third interview of the podcast we talk with the scientist about bill, bill nye the science guy comes on the show you know what That'll be I bet I can, let's get a little google going here why can you not look at an why can you not not yeah, 
I get the, like the when it's a super sunny one, but why wouldn't you be able to look at it when it's super dark? Uh, it can cause well, so it's not like super dark. Usually, there's like a ring of light around it, but it can cause permanent damage to the retina. That sounds um, that sounds bad. I will not be uh, looking up. Yeah, I mean sometimes but, uh, there's like. What celebrity was it that said this is BS? I'm gonna look up and then immediately was it was it Joey Badass? There was like a rapper that's like this is uh, BS. Okay, I think I see. So I think it's because like the so the sky darkens, but like there's still the light. So like normally during like the day, if you look up at the sun, like you're not completely screwed because the the sky's brighter. But because it's dark, but there's still that really bright light, I think that does worse damage. So this, uh, we'll get back to baseball very shortly, but this is really funny. So apparently back in 2017, Joey Badass admitted that he got eye damage because of looking at the eclipse. But then <laughs> later, a couple of years later, he actually went back and said he lied. He just wanted to get off the tour with Logic. And the most hilarious thing is I actually went to that concert. It was at Festival No Pier. way. So I went before that eclipse happened and he lied to get off that tour. That's hysterical. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I went to my concerts right before I started college. That's so funny. How much did he hate Logic, man? I don't know. Enough to lie. <laughs> He's like, I, I have an excuse, and I'm just going to go with it. But, what kind of vibes are you giving off when someone's like, yeah, I'm just going <laughs> to <I'd> rather <laughs> damage my eye eyes damage. staring at the sun. <laughs> fake eye damage is the best part. Too. Oh, man. That's All awesome. Right, well, let's get back on track here. Um, let's talk about Marple because – you know, we were kind of weighing the game of the week at whether it was Herodin and Pencrest or Marple and Springfield. I'm sure glad that we didn't pick Marple and Springfield because it was 14 nothing Marple in the first inning. Yeah, I mean, that's a um, – from a game of the week and content standpoint, that would have sucked. I mean, Oh, my God, that would have been awkward. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, us just, like, <laughs> in there filming. Like, oh, man, that would just be uh, – I don't even know we what it is. We only would have gotten two and a th- – half innings right that wasn't that yep. yeah so we definitely yeah, made the right decision um in hindsight very very odd uh stat line for sean williams who i think had nine unearned runs or eight unearned runs and one earned run like whatever it was i think there was errors early that piled on but yeah i mean we knew the marple uh marple team was going to rebound you know luke Dancota pitched really well against them but they also didn't really have many games you know, they had a couple scrimmages in Florida, but, like, no real games yet. Yeah. So they were still kind of getting into it. Uh, so, in that game, Bennett Cox and Lucian Berger both had three hits, both drove in two runs. Aiden Curran also drove in three runs, and he threw uh, the three innings in that game. The The entertaining game was Marple and Radner, where Radner was actually leading this game 3-2 to two going into the bottom seventh. Uh, Austin Havertan, once again, just phenomenal. I mean, he when he's a senior man, he's going to be – and not that he's not late right now, but like his junior and senior year oh, yeah. for this guy, six and a third. Uh, he only let up two runs uh, when Radner made the pitching change. Bennett Cox ripped an RBI triple and that tied it up. And Jackson Berger uh, hit a grounder, but the throw home wasn't quite in time. So big win for Marple, two and one in the Central League. You know, nice that they kind of got back on track. Uh, one note on Radner I did want to say is that I still believe that next year and maybe the year after they're going to be a very good team. They're missing um, – I was DMing with one of, the, one of the kids who has an incredibly hard last name to pronounce. It's like S-Z-Y. <laughs> it's like Sacholsky or something. Um, I don't even know how to how to pronounce it. S-Z-Y-C. No last name should start like that. It's a lot of compliments. <laughs> um, so he was telling me, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go with Zacholsky. So he's out for the year. He's the catcher. Kyle Miltenberger is out for the year with a broken foot. He's the second baseman. Danny Armstrong, their number two, has a broken hand. Jesus. So right now, they're dealing with all that. Oh, yeah, um, they're getting killed right now. And um, But they're also going to be all returning but two guys next year. So I, I, do, I do think that they could be, you know, a team where, like, next year, you know, we leave them off the rankings and then we, you know, see, like, wow, like, this team's actually, you know, got some juice behind them. Yeah, not for sure. They, I think, I mean, going in, we said you know, this year is going to be a little bit of a growth year. Um, but yeah, I mean, especially with you got a guy like Havertine as your ace, they're going to be really impressive. I think, you know, in these next two years. Yeah. I mean, the Pencrest guys were glowing about him, you know, especially oh, yeah, yeah. The sophomore. they, uh, they can see the talent there, but, um, all right, let's, uh, let's move on to Ridley here. You know, Ridley was a team we had, uh, in the Charlie. power rankings to start the year, but we weren't quite sure 
how you know their their new arms were going to be because you know you lose Mike Happerset who was a star, you lose Jake Nauman, you know you kind of have to wonder like what's going to happen. Chris Kimmel has stepped into that ace role and he's been fantastic. Six innings, one earned run, nine strikeouts against a solid Conestoga lineup. He's got to start both of their Central League games, uh, and he's been one of the best pitchers in the conference so far. Yeah, he's been great. I just neither of us have seen him throw yet, but I mean I think that'll change soon. Uh, but yeah, it's. I think there are questions with Ridley on like who would, especially pitching wise, like step into those roles, and he's done great. John Tian's come in and uh, done really well as a closer. Uh, yeah, I mean they they they're looking like they haven't missed a beat there. For sure, for sure. And the lineup's been, I would say, good, not great. You know, I mean they scored eight runs yeah. in that game against a great pitcher like Jake Friel. Um, so I mean it's hard to be upset. Uh, Tyler McDevitt had two hits. Danny Stickney. Drove in two runs. Uh, Bobby Doherty, as as Brian called him, Joe Dirt. Uh, he <laughs> drove in two runs as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think lineup wise, Central League it's probably middle to upper middle of the pack. You know, they got they got some good bats. Uh, and I don't know. I, I I I think this team. You know, they've made the playoffs. What did they say? Like four, like all at least all four years they've been in high school. Yeah, they've made a yeah they've made a decent I'm amount of time. Sure it goes back further than that. I remember Pecco starting a playoff game, so it goes back to I would say probably like eighteen or nineteen. As well, I don't think they made it when I was a senior in, in uh, 2017. But um, yeah, these guys, senior year. yeah, these guys play. I want to say they have some interesting games this week. Definitely uh, some game of the week considerations, and we mean this when we say we actually don't have a game of the week decided yet. We have some ideas that we'll uh, we'll talk about in a little bit. But I believe Ridley has some uh, some good games coming up this week. I think they might play like Lower Mary. Yeah, they play Lower Mary. Yeah, on they got Lower Mary. I think. Yeah, so that'll be fun. Uh, let's move on to what well, we talked a little bit about Conestoga. They rebounded from that loss to Ridley and they won a slugfest with Lower Marion. It was 14 to nine. I was watching this game uh, on Game Changer. Tyler Phillips uh, drove in three runs. He was two for three. Uh, James Queasy, three for five, two RBIs. Great to see him healthy. Chase Ranton in one for two with an RBI. He also walked three times. And one of my favorite just names in the conference, Richie Biberoche, was two for <laughs> with an RBI, but even you go down to the bottom of the order, like that's, that was their, you know, like uh, their top five ish, like Cooper Evers, one for two with two RBIs and their nine hitter Landon Jones, two for three with three RBIs. Like that's some depth right there. Yeah, that's for sure. That's you. I don't, you really like, I, I think that's kind of where a lot of these really good lineups can separate themselves and become great lineups is in the bottom of the order. You get, when you get guys producing like that, that's, it's a good sign for them, especially after kind of getting off to a little bit of a rough start to see the bats turn around and then hopefully like the pitching as well start to get rolling. Um, yeah. Hopefully that puts them like moving in the right direction. Yeah. And we, and we said it in the preview episode, we're like, this team could either go four and 12 or 12 and four. And neither yeah. would surprise me. Like we had no idea what to expect. Uh, and they're two and one right now. And uh, before we move on from Stoga, I do want to talk real quick about this cool video that I believe it was the Ridley account tweeted out. So uh, there's a young man named Sonny. He, uh, he has Down syndrome, and he was a student at Conestoga, uh, and he is just a diehard Conestoga sports fan. Uh, and what I was told is his dad was a retired uh, local police officer, and he had asked the athletic director if Sonny could just, like, help out with different stuff in, you know, with the sports programs. Uh, and that's when the coaches kind of got involved. They made him an honorary coach for both football and baseball. And at the end of every baseball game, the two teams line up, and they run around the bases, which is so cool. You know, you can see how excited he is when he does it. The kids love it, and I think I think Radner does something similar as well. I don't know if it's yeah, ever did, um, but at that at that Pencrest game. Uh, so check out this video here. I mean, that's just like such a, that's such a cool, you know. Atmosphere. Yeah, it really is. It's cool and, to see like people like doing that. And it's one of those things where it's like even if my team got blown out fifteen nothing, like once you're on that line seeing him go, it's one of those like you know it puts everything into perspective. You're For just sure. like we're just you know we're out here playing the game we love uh, and and doing it at the highest level we can. And you know just to see that atmosphere of everybody just like enjoying it and how much he enjoys it was just so cool. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right, let's uh, move on to our last uh, team that we're talking about in the storylines here. Uh, Carol got their first dub of the year. Uh, it's got to be so cool for the Ray family, like the parents, to see Gavin pitch and then Liam come in after him and finish out the win. They took on a very good Penn Charter team uh, in nasty weather conditions. I think it was Thursday, and in the city, it looked like it was raining a lot more. So oh, it was yeah. a cloudy, windy, rainy day. Gavin threw four innings pitched, uh, no no runs allowed, three Ks. Uh, but the most impressive thing for him is no walks, because I know command's you know been an issue in the past, but it seems like something that he's been trying to work through, and you know it kind of showed the maturity in that game to go out there against you know a Penn Charter team that's beaten up on some of these Delco teams. I mean, they uh, you know they who do they just beat? They just beat uh, they just beat Bonner. Yeah, they beat Bonner on Saturday, uh, and Liam came in after that three innings, one earned run, you know, two Ks for him. So to go out there against a good lineup like that uh, is is very encouraging because look like they kind of started out a little bit slow right I think they lost their first two or three but the PCL hasn't even started yet for them no yeah There's yeah a- that's oh it'll be interesting to see I think it's it's good to see and like I guess really encouraging to see Gavin doing what he's doing especially with like, with like the conditions that he was pitching in that's a very like very easy to just kind of like you know, like whatever, like that, that's raining, like just kind of be completely cooked. Uh, just seemed like he, you know, really kind of locked it in and just did his thing. And it's, it's, you know, I think as he kind of gets more into the season, you know, I feel like he's going to only kind of trend in the up direction. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you could argue that if he is on, he's the best pitcher in Delco. I mean, he, ha- he sure. has, yeah. you know, the best fastball. You know, he can have some Probably of the best pure stuff. Yeah. 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 So I, you know, I, I do believe that there's a scenario where at the end of the year we have our Cy Young award and he's the winner, right? Like that's, it's mm-hmm. absolutely in the realm of possibilities. if He's able to put it all together. Uh, so very encouraging start for them and they will get their PCL season started this week. I'd imagine I'll look it up real quick. I, th- I would imagine on Monday, it could be Tuesday, but let's see. So they will be playing at St. Joe's prep on Tuesday. So that's okay. They'll get their season started, and that is game that going to be is that going to be Gavin going again? Or is that... I, so he pitched on Thursday, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Too. Yeah, he should be fine. He only yeah. threw four innings, so I would imagine, yeah, sixty nine pitches. He'll be fine for that cool. that game. Uh, so that'll be a good start to the year for them. All right, let's uh, let's get into our interviews here. So as as foreshadowed, we got some good ones uh, with Penn Fest and Garner Valley. So we're going to start off um, as mentioned. These are in studio, and these were on Friday night. So at this point. Pencrest had, let's see, they had just beaten Herodin the day before and they had not played Springfield yet. So let's welcome on our guys from Pencrest. We got Gavin Brown. We got Nico Tazi, uh, the, one of our, I think, maybe the second or third brother combos that we've had to get both of them on the show is uh, Nico because we had the Mathis, yeah. different Mathis brothers. Uh, so I believe they are the, uh, I believe they're the third set because we had the Kehoes as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Both of them, uh, and then Ben Etienne joining as well. So let's welcome on these guys. All right, we are now joined by our guys from Pencrest. We got Gavin Brown, Nico Tazi, and Ben Etienne. Gentlemen, thank you for coming in. How are we doing today? Great for having us. Thank you. you. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, first in season interview for us. All of ours have been previous so far, so we actually have games to talk about. Um, obviously, you guys are a very confident group, two and zero in the Central League. I guess my first question is, when did you guys realize this team was going to be so talented? Because, you know, it, the, the whole getting slept on has been a big theme here. <laughs> uh, I think um, I think we've been using it as fuel. Like, we've known that this was going to be the group for a while, at least for us to, since our freshman year. But really, these winter workouts, like, kids really bought in this year, and it was never like that before, I know. He played for three years, I played for two, but I've never seen anything like it, and like you said about being the first in-season interview, I kept telling Josh, uh, the ca- uh, another captain on our team, I said they're not going to interview us before the season because they don't know about us. But I said once the season gets started, we'll be on there. That's hey, we that's, try our best. Yeah, <laughs> that's the right mentality. We are also very yeah, dumb people, yeah, to be yeah, fair. Very, very um, good, but but no, I was talking to I think uh, you about this where uh, I thought a bubble team was a compliment. Like coming off of a year where you guys didn't do that well. To say like playoff bubble and who was it that yelled that? Because I thought me. I thought it was hysterical. <laughs> like I want to make this clear out there that I want you guys to chirp me because it's way way more fun that way. But I was just like I thought that was uh, I yeah. thought I was being nice, but I was saying like I think they're going to be <laughs> right like around you know on the bubble could also mean in the playoffs too. Yeah, yeah. No, I was I love that, but it was obviously a compliment for us. But obviously, yeah. if you're in our group, you 
we all think yeah. way higher of ourselves. So we take everything on the chin. We you just, have to. We, yeah. we, yeah. we take yeah. everything. On so the chin. we were we're in the process of making like merchandise, like team specific stuff. Like you know, it'd be one. Obviously, we can't put like a Pencrest logo, you know, on something or or whatever, just because we'll you know get sued probably. <laughs> but something where we were gonna have like a either my two ideas, and you guys can vote if you want. One of them was gonna say take it personal and the P would be like red and the other one was going to be keep sleeping and the P was red. So you guys can choose which of those you think fits. I think they're both pretty, uh, pretty accurate. I like them both. Yeah. yeah I'm like going to have to put both honest. out. Yeah. <laughs> little, little, yeah. uh, little city connect, uh, yeah. t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. The Phillies, the Phillies, uh, city connects are terrible. I, I am, uh, they have, the hats look very good. The jerseys are okay, but I don't like the pants. Like, why are you wearing black, navy yeah. blue See, pants? I thought the only, like, relatively decent thing was the pants. Like, really? You I like thought, the I hate the pants. jersey so much. Yeah. I hate yeah. it. I'm, a, I'm on the opposite. I love them. You love Really? Yeah. I just, I don't like the dark pants. It looks too college I know. Yeah. I feel like seeing, I didn't think they were going to go blue pants, but I think seeing them, like, I was more imagining it in the bank. I think it would be, like, Yeah, that's a good point. It's a new it's something new. If they start winning, people will love them. Yeah. So that's <laughs> the, all that matters. The numbers on the back are kind of rough. I got like Trey Turner looking. Oh, the question mark. Yeah, dude, it looks yeah. like a Riddler the out Riddler. there. Like, yeah. so. I didn't see that. Yeah. It's so bad. I like the font they have. Like the it's like a pointy font. Oh uh, yeah, on, on the yeah, front. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, all right, so I guess we'll go back back to this. Um, so what do you guys think has been the biggest uh, keys to your success so far this year? Uh, definitely our pitcher throwing strikes. We struggled with command all. All of last year was so bad. All of our pitchers could struggle with command. Like me personally, I always need that first strike. I want that first strike every single at bat, and I'm going to attack you to get that first pitch strike. Do you think the grunts add to your accuracy? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Grunts equal velo. Yeah. Uh, I'll tap in on that, but I think I mean obviously Gavin coming up as big role this year. Like last year, he was kind of that guy that we knew next year would be big, but wasn't like we didn't know anything like he would gain the velo he did but he came up as that ace for us that we never we didn't have last year we didn't have the year before that or i guess we did but this is the year like gavin came up to play and obviously he's hitting too and then if you come to like if you look at our practices we have guys staying after every practice staying after up to an hour hitting off the machine we'll never have the machine under like 90 miles per hour 95 we're pumping those reps to see it and it comes like when we see 87 yesterday, like that doesn't phase anyone on our team. And I think you can see it in our whole lineup. Like there's not one guy going up there that you're like, oh, this kid's not going to get a hit. Yeah, and I, I think I wrote it um, in, I think I just tweeted it out. I'm like, there's really no easy outs, like one through nine uh, from anybody. And going back to like the practice stuff, like that's the type of stuff that us on the outside, mm-hmm. like we don't really get mm-hmm. to see, you know, like getting to have you guys in and talk about it. Uh, is, is pretty cool. But let's talk about that that game yesterday. So it was pretty close for a while. You guys kind of powered through in the, was it the fifth inning? You had yeah, a couple yeah, runs yeah. there. Uh, just talk about that game. Um, I mean, it was nice to, like, get hits here and there, but then we finally, like, actually, like, connected all the hits and got it back-to-back and was able to, like, the bunt by Josh was absolutely huge. Like, getting that run in and, like, Harry being so aggressive. Yeah, and just, run, like, scoring from second is that nuts. That is wild. He stole home against Springfield last year and – that like, like on a throwback to the pitcher, and it opened up the game, and that was like one of our four wins last year. Did we have four wins? Yeah, four. Yeah, four. And you had a steal at home. Uh, yeah. Which game is that? Chai. No, yeah. yeah, I just kid was going a little slow, and I, I told my coach, I told him four times. He's like, "Don't do it." <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, was it like a, you better be safe if yeah. you're going to do it kind yeah. of thing? Yeah. Yeah. We got to two outs. I was like, "Coach, I'm going." <laughs> I just ran, and he he put his head down. He didn't see anything, and then I was safe. So. Do you guys feel like the pinstripes are going to add some more wins this year? Oh, for sure. Whose idea was it to bring those in? Uh, so they texted us in the beginning of the year, and they said they wanted to do, like, a senior-inspired jersey. And I remember I was at uh, Ivy with Rubina, and I was sitting there, and I was I showed him the text, and I was like, I'm making a pinstripe jersey. And so I sent the, like, original idea of, like, the Phillies jersey, but Pencrest instead. And then we made some tweaks. We added the line to the back, and... So I think it was I think it's really cool because it's the whole like team coming in to make one jersey, which no there's no other teams in our school that can do that. And I think we try to like embody like the Phillies mentality. Like I see ourselves as them a lot. 
So I think to be able to like represent that with the pinstripes is sick. I like the little uh, little yellow on the sleeve too. Yeah, you know, like the little yeah. stripes, right? <laughs> yeah, like I have three older brothers, so I've been in Pancrest like my entire life. Literally. You're not related to Robbie Brown, are you? Nah. Okay, I was gonna say <laughs> yeah. I, I grew up playing little league with him. Yeah, but um, one of our freshman jerseys were literally like mustard yellow. They were hideous. <laughs> I, I remember they that. were so <laughs> ugly. It was so bad. bad. My biggest issue with the uniforms is gray jerseys fine if you wear gray pants. I don't like the gray and the white pants. Mm. We do that. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. That's what I, was I would wear, I would just, I would just wear the pinstripes on the road. Just tell the other teams, like, hey, this is, this is our yeah, turf we're now. We're pinstripes. You know? yeah. yeah, the only Marple's got them too. So they do. We wanted to bring them out for the night game, but they'll probably have them on. Oh, so. a double pinstripe would be, <laughs> would be would pretty be fun. Oh, I think they're too similar because yeah. of the orange. Yeah, is so yeah, it'd be tough to right. tell either team. One hundred percent. Let's see. So you guys will be playing Springfield on Sunday. Do you play? In anything in between that and Strathaven on Wednesday? Marble. We play Marble, Marble on Monday. Monday. You guys are really going to get things going here <laughs> yeah, quickly. Yeah, it's going to be a wild week. Yeah, so obviously you and Josh have gotten most of the innings, but talk about some of the rest of the arms that you guys have because you're going to need more than just you two to get through this. Yeah, we have a sophomore, uh, Michael Shade. He's he's solid. Like He throws like low 80s, and he's just like able to find the zone. Like I faced him, and it was good. And we have another sophomore, Henry Murphy. He throws like 85. Like I faced him in live at bats. He was, yeah, he I, it's, it surprised me so much. And I caved on three pitches. Like I just, <laughs> I was a spectator for that entire bat. He threw me four, three fastballs. And it was just like one, two, three. I was like, that is wild. That was like the, no one knew about him. That's like the, I'm not familiar with your game. Yeah, like, I'm I, sorry. I had no idea what was coming. I had no idea. He surprised me. I didn't, when he came out live at bats, he was humming by kids. And I was like, that, that looks really fast. And I, I know he struggles with some arm pain, but like, he he was not throwing like that, at least in tryouts or before the season. Yeah. But, yeah, he came out. Now we also have, like, lefty and Michael Paggs. We have righty and uh, Keenan. Like, they're not fireballers, but they will pound the zone, and they'll hit them corners. And Keenan, he has, like, 17 pitches, I swear. <laughs> like, like, he <laughs> is, like, oh, yeah. Well, especially if they come in after you, where it's, like, hard throwing righty, then you bring in the lefty yeah. junk ball. Or yeah, then it's I, like think that, I think me and Josh back-to-back is yeah. perfect. I think it's honestly perfect. Because it's two different angles, and then it's obviously two different yeah. speeds. Josh's celebrations kill me. I love it. <laughs> yeah, he does, he's <laughs> the sleep. He's done the, the take and the bow. I love it. He got the take and the bow from one of our coaches. Really? Yeah. They yeah. told him to? No. Matt Pannoni's <laughs> Instagram is a video of him doing it, and we, yeah. uh, Matt we convinced Pinoni. him to do it. So us two and, and Matt all played Delco League together. Yeah. Uh, Matt's currently recovering from TJ, right? Yeah. 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 He got the new TJ that um, the Harper got, the one like with the like least amount of recovery time and everything. And exactly. Apparently, so, it's just cool. like fusing it It's together. worth the risk, you know, yeah. Yeah. trying to get your college career back going is quick. That's cool to get to be there with Ben there as well. Yeah. It's is Ben senior? Yeah. Senior, yeah. 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 yeah, we have a lot of seniors. Yeah. We also have an arm, Sam Bennett's our shortstop. He is not throwing at all, but, like, he's solid. You can if you need to. Yeah, 100%. Same he's like a he, miser. miser. Is he hurt right now? No, no he no. just hasn't got the right so it's a, We're in a weird spot right now because he's more of, like, a designated hitter for some guys. Um, and we just have so many guys that can hit. So I think we're still figuring out our lineup. But, I mean, there's no. I don't think there's anything wrong with throwing him in at the extra hitter sometimes if someone's, like, Little gas, put him in as the DH for them, but yeah, he can definitely hit. So we're gonna get him in there. Nice. Um, I just one thing so was Josh gonna be like a relief guy for you, or is he, or is he like the second starter? It's just kind of so out he actually hates starting. He really? hate, he, he despises it. Like last year, we had a kid start against Radner. He let up like six walks in a row. He came in. He got like one out. Josh threw like six and two thirds. I actually remember this game. Was this the 15-14 game or no? No. no. That was the, that was the first Radner. one? Okay, yeah, that was yes. the first one. We're always close with Radner. Yeah. I've, like, even from my sophomore year when we had, like, Michael Costello, he was our fireballer. Quentin Pirelli. Yeah, he beast. was – Quentin Pirelli is one of the best baseball Blue player. Blue Jay, Elizabeth Town Blue Jay. Yeah, he is one of the best, best baseball players I've ever seen in all aspects. Like, pitching to him – was different. Like you could see from the beginning that he's going to go to a solid school when he's done Elizabeth Town. Yeah. He's raking out there. Right he now. is ra- here he has the home run. Yeah, record. That's yeah. As a sophomore? Yeah. Oh my god. He yeah. said it like a couple days ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, the call was, was amazing on it. Yeah, I don't know. Really? It was, I was, it was, it was uh, a pimp job too. It was a oh, bomb. Dude, well, there was, was another bomb. there's a guy, Ben Watson, that played yeah, Elizabeth Town yeah. the transfer to Virginia Tech. He, so he was on like a fourteen game hit streak. Yeah, he was killing Tech this year, yeah. Was, he tells me about another dude who's. I think I was telling you he's had in March of his sophomore year of college has a hundred hits. <laughs> like that same the same Jesus. the yeah, same class awesome. with Pirelli and him. Like I don't know what 
they paid those guys. <laughs> <laughs> NIL deals. Yeah, what yeah. the NIL deal was up it. there, but. What do you Jesus. think Delco Base went out NIL deals? Start paying <laughs> paying people to wear merchandise. Yeah. Benny baseball shirts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, the Benny baseball shirts. Uh, we'll give you we'll give you a nice cut of the, uh, of the stuff. Let's go. We need to uh, try not to get sued by the PIAA. Although any publicity is good publicity, so getting sued by the PIAA that would, be big. would actually, be, actually be pretty cool. Yeah. I'm sure it. there's like some lawyer that follows us. That, <laughs> oh, he's just <laughs> waiting. That will take it's our like, case. Someone's dad. Have you ever seen the Wolf of Wall Street? It's yeah, like yeah, just yeah, waiting yeah. for them to slip up. Like the FBI <laughs> agent that's always like, See, I you know. know these two idiots are going to mess yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to describe it. So do you guys think uh, if we move you guys out of the power rankings, you're going to lose a little fuel or you're going to keep it rolling? I was thinking about that, but uh, I think it's more like in the team, like you, the, uh, some of the things like the bubble team, like that helps out a little bit, but – I think the amount of fuel we have in, within ourselves, within this team, is going to keep us moving throughout the season. Believe me, everything's in the group chat. Every, <laughs> like, like everything, like we're always just like, take it on the chin, let's go, put your head down, let's win this ball game. Maybe we should keep you guys out just so the team stays, <laughs> stays more fired up, turn you know? Turn into a bit. Yeah, it's like you guys are 15 and 0. Like, I don't know, we haven't seen enough from them yet that, to put them in here. Add a 10th team to the power rank. <laughs> <laughs> Not a few you guys. Yeah, yeah. This one's weird because usually we like to talk about them on the show, but since we're here today and there's more games this weekend, we'll probably just yeah. put them out. Um, usually Sunday night is what we like to do for the most part. Um, but one thing I wanted to ask uh, for you, Gavin, specifically, you kind of look like a psycho on the mound. I mean that in a good way. <laughs> like a lot of emotion, a lot of fired up. Have you always been like that, or is that something that kind of developed late? So I've always definitely been a hothead, like 100% always been a hothead, but since like being on varsity since my sophomore year like last year was such a disappointment like my sophomore year we had some good kids like we were old too we had 10 seniors or like 11. um my brother was on the team like it was just like a good time like i knew those kids for, like my entire life so i was like we gotta buy in and when we lost that playoff game we had i think it was three to one and we lost with like one hit it was just like a bad game and then us going to our senior year and like me definitely being the last time playing with Ben, playing with Nico, playing with all the seniors and even the sophomores and juniors that I've definitely become like too and like really become like a brotherhood. We're definitely a brotherhood and a whole family. But um, with being a high head, I just want to win. I am so competitive. I'm the youngest of four boys. So always been competitive. Everything is a competition. Just grew up getting beat up by those guys. And you had to, <laughs> yeah, you had no, to survive. Wh wiffle ball was wild. <laughs> oh, wiffle ball was wild. We I, was, I was a spectator of the wiffle ball games. <laughs> no, they, they, they got back heated. Back in the brown days. Yeah. They got heated. No, we did a wiffle ball tournament one time. We beat the best team in the tournament that won it last year, and I was throwing. I was nine years old. <laughs> and I was just throwing as hard as I could. It was just like velo. It was, just, it was it. literally a velo day. Do um, you want to talk about those Radner kids that were just, were just chirping oh you the God. entire game? Like all, it was, it was the fans. They loved me. Yeah, they followed me around. They the did. When you went, when like, you went, it was like okay, and I hit the double. And they literally, I saw them turn around <laughs> yeah. and leave, and Love they it. said, they said, should we go to Pencrest? Uh, originally, they joked that they were going to go to Pencrest when you guys play them there, and they said, no, let's just go when they're not playing Radner, just show up and just start like, <laughs> which I thought would have been really funny if that, that would if they, if they weren't up. playing Radner, that would fire me up. He's got a fan club. Yeah, <laughs> there's some people that get rattled, some people that feed off it. You got to figure out quickly, you know. Well, when I was 12 years old, we played at Ridley and Ridley area. Baseball. Um, crazy. Yeah. I think we at least had a thousand people at one of our championship games. Like we beat them. We had a kid, uh, Dylan Hall, he graduated from Sun Valley last year. He shoved he had like 16 games. And we played them the next day, and it was the most amount of people I've ever seen. Like it was it the was whole, ag it the was whole district game. Like it was ridiculous. Everyone. Like Ben was there, like never talked to the kid once. Like he was a media kid, like Everyone oh, I go. knew. Yeah. I was a media kid. How about that run to uh, Williamsport this year? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That team was uh, – that team. That, I mean, we owe those guys drinks in 10 years because they brought so much just traction to our <laughs> yeah, account. Yeah, you know? yeah that just was the huge. Delco. Yeah. The Chuck, the Chuck Bevin wearing the O on his chest. We actually – we uh, you'll like this. We actually bought a team in Media Little League. So there will be a National League team that has Delco Baseball now on the back of their oh, jerseys. Well, so we're going to show up in the, suits to opening – right? We are the Blue Jays, the Blue yeah. Jays. We're going to show up to opening day in suits and just really buy into, like, the whole ownership <laughs> thing, you know. Because, like, hey, like, you know, six, seven years from now, like, there are there are high school guys, right? Yeah, get, yeah. Get they'll them be, on the, they'll yeah. be right here. Yeah, get them on the goods. Yeah. They'll, be, they'll be in the seats here yeah, and uh, be sick. for either Pencrest or, or Strathaven because media – like, I went to Strathaven, I think – feel like media is definitely more Pencrest, but I think it still has a decent amount of both. Yeah, it's Middletown, Sun Valley. And, yeah. Uh, 
Kind of crust. Is Aston Valley still a thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. So they were Cal- they're Cal- yeah, that's Cal- Ripken. Got it, so got it. Yeah, more, that was we always played them. That was, uh, yeah, Aston Valley for was like a big rival. But. I was wondering. Yeah, Springfield was Cal Ripken too. Right? Yeah, 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 I remember that. There was kids that uh, played at Aston and played at Sun Valley too. Or um, what was it called? A lot of kids did that. Aston Middletown and Aston Valley. Aston Valley, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you can do better. Well, it was funny because we were talking about how the media kids were going to go back to middle school and half the grade was Aston Middletown kids that had to just watch them go to <laughs> yeah. Williamsport. Yeah. No, after that's Springton. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Springton, I remember. Springton's just the two little leagues just together. And we were like the two powerhouses, I felt, obviously other than Ridley. Yeah. And we like, came mm-hmm. together at Springton and we obviously thought that was going to continue into Pencrest and... Obviously, private schools poach kids. But yeah. So why did you end up staying at Pencrest when Roman went to Carroll? So I was originally plan like that was my plan to go to Carroll. My one of my coaches actually my football eighth grade year was talking to me because he knew I was going to Carroll and he said he w- he told me he said you could win a state championship for Carroll and have a parade with, with no one actually caring or you can go to your hometown team and you can win something for your city. And, like, obviously I haven't won anything, but Not I feel yet. like that just – yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, like, being having a city behind me and, like – or a town and being able to, like, play for something bigger than, like, yourself, I feel like, at a private school is, like, you're playing to go to college. Like, we're playing for Pencrest and for media and, like, also all my – best friends going to the school so it's a really cool way to look at it it is yeah and you know we kind of have to see like obviously we're both public school yeah. guys but we have to kind of see like you know because we get people commenting all the time like oh stay public like you know people like chirping you know 16 year old kids yeah. for going to <laughs> private schools yeah, yeah. it's like hey like everybody has their reasons like we just want what's best for for these guys There's like, pros yeah, and cons. yeah, yeah absolutely sure. Absolutely. Like, guys that go to the Interact, like, that's an elite baseball league. They get, you know, to face, like, guys like that every day, uh, and, and, it, and it's cool. But uh, let's talk a little bit about college baseball. So, Ben, we'll start with you. You're heading to Penn State Altoona. Let's talk about the recruiting process, how you ended up there. So, during the spring and summer season, I got invited to go to the PBR State Games, which was in Du Bois. And... I turned out really well there, and the coach from Penn State Altoona reached out to me, sent me this really like good email, and my performance from the state games actually led me to go to the senior games. So during like that period of time in between, we were still talking. Um, I ended up actually going to tour uh, Penn State Altoona right before I went to the senior games. And I really like the campus. I really like the coach. It was It's a young team. I mean, they had three seniors last year. Two of them played my position. But I feel like I made a good choice just because I was expecting, like, a l- less recruiting class. And it turns out that we actually have a couple good kids. Um, even from, like, Avangrove, there's another catcher that's going there, Joe O'Connor. Um, especially some kids from out there. Like, there's a kid, shortstop, that went to go into Greencastle. He's going there. Um, but I feel like we have a really good recruiting recruiting class, so I think I made the right decision. Is that a school you can do all four years? Because I know some branches you can and some you can't. Yes. Some people, most of the people that go there are doing the 2 plus 2, but I don't know about the baseball guys because the team is, like, really young, like I said, so... It, there could be a point where all, we're all seniors and, you know, maybe the guys just want to stick it out, but some guys are going to do the two plus two. All right, uh, Nico, you're going to be going to Catholic. You're going to get to play with Roman for two mm-hmm. years. Uh, how much did that factor into you going there? Uh, so, well, funny enough, it was E-Town and Catholic were my, oh, those damn. Are my, those <laughs> my two. That's my two. But, so I remember I went down to Georgia and I got right when I got home on the from the flight, Q texted me and said, um, cause like it was a perfect game event and they were tweeted some stuff out and Q texted me and said, my coach wants to talk to you. Like, can I give him your number? Are you good with that? And I was like, yeah, like that was the first school that really reached out to me in the recruiting wise. So I was really excited. I remember I was in the airport when he texted me that. So then the coach texted me and I remember I had some banner going with my brother. I was like, can't wait to play you, whatever, four times a year. And he was like, He's like, yeah, you guys are going to get shut down and all this stuff. And then I feel like after E-Town, things started to pick up. I would go around, and Rome, the Catholic coach, he didn't want to recruit me off me being Roman's brother. He wanted to actually see me, and the only time I played in him 
uh, it was at an E Town camp actually. I did the tour at E Town, and then had they had a camp, and the Catholic coach was there, Coach Picardo, and I led off the game with a triple, and he came out to me right after the at bat. He said. He said, I, I want to recruit you off your speed. And he said, I didn't care about the hit tool. But then I saw that, and he was like, so I definitely want – he was like, you play like a cardinal, and I want you there. So I definitely had a tough decision be- between the two, and I think it was pretty even. And then I, so obviously I, I had to lean towards Roman and Berm. Like I grew up with Berm always That's around the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. He's always coming in, going in the fridge, getting some grilled chicken. <laughs> so. He might weigh the same now that he did when he was 12, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Was, it's his, always his first trip. He goes right to the fridge <laughs> looking for the grilled chicken. So. Media uh, Little League legend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that dude, it, he hit bombs back in the yeah, day. Yeah. He still does, but. Um, oh, I always looked up to him, I, for sure. And then, obviously, my brother's been, like, my biggest role model through the whole thing. So, Because I never wanted to play college baseball until, like, my junior year, like, last year when I realized I could, and then uh, so that all started to pick up, and obviously I I remember the coach called me, uh, one of the other coaches on the staff, and he said, you imagine a Friday night, Roman's pitching and you're in center, and last out of the game, comes up, pop up to center, and you catch it, and Roman's closing the game out. He's like, in the goosebumps. Pretty good sell, yeah. yeah, pretty good sell. <laughs> he, well, said, uh, yeah, <laughs> he said, uh, he said, those are memories you're going to have for the rest of your life. And he said that. I, to be honest, I was in my bed on the phone with him. I was like, that's the biggest thing. I didn't, I didn't I, instantly when he told me that, I was like, I'm going to Catholic. And, I'm and, sure your uh, parents were happy about that. Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't have to buy two stores. For yeah, this. exactly. Quick trip. Yeah. yeah. Gavin, are you ready to announce your commitment to Penn State Club Baseball live on the air? I mean, I haven't committed for, uh, like, I've heard back from Westchester and Penn State, and I got the Penn State made, and my brother's going to be up there. I was like, I kind of have to, yeah, like, come nice. on. But um, obviously the goal is to make the actual team. Oh, like, of course. All, like, yeah, all, like of course. always. Like, why not, like, sure. try it out? Like, especially Alec Doner, for, Alec Doner first yeah. and, like, Paving the way, honestly. Like, why not? Like, there's definitely a chance. Well, yeah, there's definitely – so there's a new coaching staff this year. Like, this is their first year. And I never did it personally, but I know people who did. I don't really think they used to take the walk-on tryouts, like, too seriously. Like, you kind of had to, like, show up throwing, like, 95 for them to be, like, you know, giving you a real real shot. Um, So is your plan Penn State, even if, you like, baseball's not in the picture? Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah, I mean, I just want to play ball. Like, anywhere I can, I want to play ball. But, um – I didn't really feel like going to a small school. Like, me personally, I'm definitely, like, yeah. a bigger school type of guy. I've been up to Penn State a couple of times, like, with my brothers, with, like, my family and everything. I love it every single time. I just like, love the atmosphere up there. Yeah, like, being up there for – I've been up there for only football games. And, like, I love the hockey team. Like, even the wrestling. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, the wrestling team is ridiculous. And I've never focused on wrestling. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy, like, how – just the, the culture of Penn State in general. It's like you go into a state with 110,000 people up there for yeah. football, and it's nuts. And, you know, like the club team, I was telling him, like, we won the national championship last year. So if you like winning, there's really no better place to, to yeah. go. And you, you fit in the the mold of just very intense people. You know, it's yeah. clubs a good balance of, like, you know, you're only playing – 25 30 games compared to like catholic you're probably playing like more like 40 or 50 yeah. you know only weekend games like two or three practices a week it's just a good balance um and they will let you be a two-way if you want to yeah. that's that's the important part. i love it yeah I, I love hitting pitching was a side gig for a long time even last year i that was always the side girl it was yeah. it always was <laughs> like even like i uh, got clocked like i was always like 84 85 like never touched 86 or anything even in October. Like, I got clocked in October. I topped 85. And then when I saw your tweet saying 88, I was That's, like, yeah, that, that was, was bad. That was wild. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I saw it. I was like, there's no way. But it definitely was just the adrenaline. Yeah. It was also a super nice day that day. Like, I think was. that was like a pitch you, like, Kate a dude on, too. It was like a – Yeah. Because like stri- I had – I think it was – you were, like, 84, 86, and, like, a couple 87s. It was like – and got to a point where, like, this was, like, a big pitch. And, like, he's going to ramble on up. Just geared up. Like, yeah. Like, Yo. No, I've heard a lot, especially from the umpires and everything. Like, against Chai, it was, like, looks like he's thrown harder late in the game. It's like, yeah, I'm probably just way more loose. It's the for sure, dude. Too. I'm catching you. Yeah, you can, you, you can verify that for sure. I know, I know you guys said, like, you guys felt the electricity in that Radner game. Uh, I told my parents when I got home, that was the most fun I've ever had playing a game, like, the amount, I don't even know what it was. Maybe it was our first Central League game of our senior year, but I just know, like, every single part of that game was just so, uh, like, electric. And I've never felt that playing baseball in my life before. And, like, I remember I got a hit. I, I got a single, and I just 
blacked out on first. I was screaming <laughs> at the doghouse yeah. so hard. So. Believe me, after that double, I had no idea what was going on. I feel on. like, I feel like you, you guys do a good job almost like creating your own energy sometime. Like that game yesterday, like cold, windy. There wasn't that many people there overall. Like you guys just, you bring yourselves, yeah. which is tough thing. Well, the good thing is that most of us like see each other during the day for school so we're all like really close so we always had that like type of energy it even like if we're losing we're still like joking around on the bench but when we're winning we're like really into it yeah we definitely don't mind coming back from a loss like we are definitely a second half team like i've seen like a lot this year especially in the central league like strathaven scoring like so many runs in the first inning marple yesterday scoring 14 in the first inning it's just like wild but like us we're definitely a second half team like i don't know if it's just seeing pitches or something or getting comfortable but we got a second or third time through the order yeah, take a little yeah. bit to warm up yeah. 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 that'll help us gotta do a game gotta preheat yeah. the oven yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, all right last thing we'll ask you guys here is just overall for you guys to get where you want to go playoffs deep run whatever what do you think you guys have to do the best Keep throwing strikes and keep playing defense. Our defense, other than yesterday, other like we haven't gotten to practice all outside at all. Like yeah. we haven't seen ground balls in a week. Like especially being on turf. Like we haven't played on turf since tryouts. So it was just like we just got to throw strikes. Our defense, our outfield is a no fly zone, hundred yeah. percent. Like our outfield with him in center, Josh in right, and uh, Harry in left. All of them are quick to the ball and get great jumps. And you saw it yesterday, even with the ball in the gap in right center, the double play. He covered some ground on that. That was, that. that was some ground cover. I mean, yeah, whoever the runner was on first, like he thought that had no chance yeah. of dropping. You should have heard the you, first base coach. You should have heard the first base coach. Go, go, go. Like, you no could have walked idea. that into first no, base. He was, he was actually scaring me. I thought I had it, and then I'm hearing go, go. I'm like, I might not have it. <laughs> Who was it that was like, where is he going? When on the, to the You said one of the one of their guys was like, Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was somebody in the background. Like, on the, the Harrison kid on the team just said, where is he going? <laughs> I was just like, damn. Was that a pinch runner? Like, I, no, I, 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 I'm I don't pretty know. sure it I don't was. Know. But it had to be. Honestly. It yeah. had to be. It was the first base coach. It wasn't him. Yeah, it definitely wasn't him. I want to put that on yourself. Yeah. All right, well, gentlemen, thank you guys for coming in the studio today. Hopefully, I'll be seeing you up in uh, State College next year. Uh, best of luck the rest of the year. We'll be out of more games. Don't worry. All right, perfect. Thank Appreciate you it. Us. Thank, thank you. you guys for having us. Coming. Yeah. All right, thank you to the boys from Pencrest for coming on the show. You know, I feel like that was one of the best just, like, flowing interviews we've had since we've been doing this, like, a team that just, like, you know, their personalities and ours really mesh together well. They're some good banter because, like, at the end of the day, like, we did sleep on them, right? We can't – I mean, we yeah, can't no, – Yeah, 100%. Get, no, just you know? hand up. Like, we definitely – they were definitely slept on by us. Like that. Yeah. yeah, and, like, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I feel like, you know, not to toot on horns, I feel like we've done a, a fairly good cho- job so far at, you know, having a good perspective given what we – you know, since we didn't really get to see much of last year. Uh, but, yeah, no, these these guys uh, seem like they have their heads screwed on right with this, you know, this run that seems like they're all kind of locked in. And uh, I would not be surprised if we're hitting more uh, Pencrest games this year. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, I think we'll, we'll you'll see us out of a couple couple more of those. And oh, hopefully, you know, playoffs, a little run from them there too. Yeah, I mean, I off the top of my head, man, I, I can't tell you the last time Pencrest won a playoff game. They made it. They made it two years ago. They, uh, as Gavin mentioned, they lost 3-1 to Westchester East. But I, I know they've made it a couple times. I'm just not sure the last time they won. And, you know, as, as Nico kind of said, like, being the, you know, if they could be the first to, like, you know, like do it for their their town, like that area, like kind of maybe convince more guys to, to stay, like, you know, at Pencrest, yeah. uh, that's that would be super cool. Yeah. For sure, for sure. All right, let's get into our next interview here. So a quick disclaimer here. For some reason in our studio, the audio did just not record on our microphones for this interview. We still have the uh, the microphone that's on the camera. So the audio, like obviously you'll be able to hear it. It's just like a little bit off compared to what it usually is. Uh, but still, we got some great stuff. We got uh, Mark Zuppo. We got Eddie Swartanevich, probably the most complicated last name in Delco. Uh, and we got Jack Krausel as well. And this was Friday night, so these guys are fresh off a win. They had literally beat Haverford, went home, showered. Our studio's in Garner Valley, so this is a home game for them. So they were able to just come in right after that. Uh, so let's get after it. All right, we are now joined by our guys from Garner Valley. Let's let's have some fun with these last names here. So I think it's Mark Zuppo. Yeah. Eddie, I'm not even going to try. So how do we say it? Swartanevich. I think we've said it on the show pretty good so far, yeah. right? And Jack Krauts over here. So I would actually texted um, Wayne teammate Drew Van Horn before we when you committed to talk about on the show like hey man like i had to talk to him in a couple months like how do you say eddie's last name because i didn't want to embarrass myself what's some of the best uh variations of that you've ever gotten uh, it gets really bad it's like 
I don't know. Some people, it's it's bad. Like I, I, I don't even know what I tried to say the first time, but whatever Van Horn texted me, I'm like, that is not what I would have guessed. Um, I remember the two of us talking about it. Like, what? We're trying to like, break it down like <laughs> syllable by syllable. It was. Um, but thank you guys for coming in. Uh, we're fresh off of a win today, so talk about that game. It was 7-5 over Haverford. We didn't get to see much, but uh, let us know how it went down here. Oh, uh, yeah, it was a pretty good game. We uh, definitely struggled in the field a little bit. You know, we got to clean off some things, but a win's a win. And I think the bats will wake up. Like, we definitely have a very good lineup. It's just cold right now, so I think we need weather to warm up a little bit. We'll be good. A 19-run game, I'm sure, felt good, too. Yeah, that was pretty wild. The, uh, the wind was so bad. All you had to do was make contact with the ball, and it would just fly off the bat. I love it. That was just blowing out all the time. Yep. Was that, that up there? That was Perk Valley? Valley? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. You guys won the Battle of the Valleys. <laughs> do you play Great Valley this year? No. I feel like uh, Sun Valley? I feel like all the valleys should have like a little, yeah, little yeah, tournament here. Valley <laughs> tournament. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Uh, so you guys are now 1-1 in the Central League. Uh, overall, what have you guys liked? What have you guys disliked? What's... Oh, I think we have. I think we have a very good lineup. Like our lineup's very good. I think it's just to have enough arms, like to keep our season going. And I think, like when our kids are on, like pitching, we're really good. And then in the field, we're really good too. So I think we could definitely be solid. We just got to clean up some things. Who are uh, some of the pitchers for you guys? Because I, I know we were trying to figure that out. I mean, Zuppo, yeah. um, Gordon, uh, Antalone, Weist. Okay. Um, then we have some. We have some younger guys too. Uh, Coleman. Um, yeah, we have some younger guys too. It's pretty easy. And then you got me out there. So no, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of more, a lot of new faces. Right? Yeah. Because so Logan Nelson graduated and and McDermott, right? Yeah. And they're both at Alvernia, right? So yeah, yeah it's uh, obviously a lot um, to try and you know replicate both of those guys. Um, so outside of you guys, who are some guys, whether it be in the lineup or the rotation, that uh, the world needs to know about? Uh, well, I think our middle infield is like really good. Well, specifically like our whole infield, but like our two young guys, like Cole and Harrison. They're probably going to be the future of our middle infield the next two years. They're really good for their age, and their maturity level is, it's, you know, they know how to joke around and have fun, but there's also a sense of, you know, we need to lock in and get a job done, and when they do that, they're, like, insanely good. They're both sophomores, right? Yeah. Colin Harrison. Wow. Um, also, one thing we wanted to ask, so we know that uh, Brady Thompson is a bit of a singer. Uh, did you guys go to his performance? <laughs> yeah, we did. We went, as a, we went as a team. It was about, like, seven or eight of us, and we, nice. uh, we all went to go watch him. That's awesome. How'd he do? It was good. It was good. Does yeah. he ever sing? You should have him sing the national anthem for a game sometime. Oh, wow. <laughs> that would be an experience. He uh, he sings in practice all the time. He's a very vocal person. He just It's like the, the real-life Troy Bolton right here. Yeah. Nice high school musical vibes going on. What's, his, go, cool. what's his go-to song? Um, I don't know. Lately, it's been the Beauty and the Beast stuff. He's just been like <laughs> stuck singing in all the lines just because <laughs> it's stuck in his head. So. That's awesome. It's like you basically have to, like, before the show, just like... Keep doing that and doing that yeah, until yeah, you, can, yeah. you can't even forget it at that point. Um, I, was, I remember lines and stuff. It has to be impossible. Oh, God. I mean, like having no shot. Not a shot. Why don't you leave? Sandy. Sandy. Yo, Brady. Oh, Sandy. Hey, hey. 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 Um, very important question. How disappointed were you guys that Dollar Dog Day got canceled? Horrible. It's just it's freezing now. Right? I mean, I wanted a dog, so it does stick <laughs> not have a Dollar Dog. We just, we gotta get the weather better soon. So. Are you guys gonna do that again? Oh yeah. yeah. 100%. Whose idea was it to you know to have that? We got Grill Nation. You know, Jackson Graff runs Grill Nation, so he always he always gets Dollar Dog going. Is that just like another student there? Yeah. Got it. Different athlete, like different sport, or just Still loves the game. Loves the game. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, he's our senior. He's uh, he's like our senior class president. So oh, nice. yeah, he did it for the football games, and he'll probably do it for the baseball games. Everyone needs a student section leader. Yeah, you know, yeah. the face of the franchise uh, type of guy. Grill Nation sounds like that. That's got to be like oh, yeah. an in-game interview with Grill Nation. <laughs> well, we're we're talking about the Pencrest guys. We're gonna start making like like team specific merchandise. You know, like we can't put like a Garnet Valley logo on something, but we could say like something else. Um, Grill Nation t-shirt would be, would be pretty funny. Um, actually, one of the questions I wanted to ask was about the jerseys. So you guys got the new jerseys that Save the Valley. Whose idea was that? Because I think they look awesome. So the original idea, um, I think we all knew that we needed new jerseys. Like, it was pretty bad. Our, base, our jerseys were pretty basic. Uh, we still use them as the away jerseys. But um, I just proposed the idea to my coach, like, in the off season and during the summer. I was like, hey, like, 
I made a concept like this is what this is what they look like. You know, let me know what they think. I think like you know the this the valley is kind of like a new identity that it could give our team. It give us like that drive to want to win and go out and play for our school every every home game that we get and really every game that we get. And um, at first they were going to be white with garnet pinstripes with the the valley logo, but then it was a little bit too much money for us, so. He, our coach, altered them a little bit and just changed them with the nice, just like white with garnet with a clean look. But it still looks really nice and they're awesome. So it's expensive to get pinstripe pants for everybody. That's that's the uh, that's the biggest problem. You think they're gonna add a couple wins to the total this year wearing the Valley jerseys? Yeah, I definitely think like when we have them on, you know, there's a saying you know, look good, feel good, play good. Uh, I definitely think that's true to an extent. So yeah, should help us out a bit. Um, so speaking of your head coach, Rudy, is it Schiller? You know how it's pronounced? Yeah. Um, so obviously not here today, but just talk about, you know, what kind of coach he is, like what he means to the program and, and how he uh, leads the team. Oh yeah, Coach Schiller, he's a really nice guy. You know, I really like playing for him because he's really relaxed. Like, he doesn't put much pressure on you. Like, he, like he'll never yell at you for a physical error in a game or a physical mistake, uh, which definitely makes playing like more relaxed. And I mean, you play your best when you're relaxed, having fun. So um, I think he's very good in that aspect. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely, like, he's he's been there for a while now. He's seen a lot happen. Um, so, you know, like Jack said, he doesn't really get upset at, you know, some of the errors we make in the game. He'll kind of just hang around and then wait until, like, you know, practice the next day or whenever we have time to kind of break down what happened, what we need to improve on. It actually allows us to kind of just take a day to process everything and then come back with a positive attitude for practice the next day. Kind of so, play, players coach vibes. Yeah, so sure. yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Uh, one thing we were interested about was I feel like there's a lot of good rivalries in the Central League, but who does Garnet Valley consider their biggest rival? It could be any sport, but I'm just thinking for baseball specifically. I feel like Marple and Strathaven because they're always competitive, yeah, and they always give us a good game. It's yeah, because it's like so those teams you only play once. We were trying to think like, is it one of the ones you play twice? Like I, I think I probably would have guessed maybe Ridley, but I don't know. I'm trying to think like. Both geographical and also just like baseball wise, you know. I'd say basketball's definitely lower Marion's. I feel like baseball kind of is too, like, but I don't know. Yeah, I kind of agree with Jack. I think like lower Marion's always like a scrappy, like they play hard team. Like every time we play them, and we've lost to them for three years straight now. Every time that we play them, so the next game that we do get them is home. You know, we're gonna try to get a big crowd for that game. Come out and have our guys support us, and hopefully we can pull that one out. Is that this week. Uh, no, that's not till later in the season, gotcha. just the last three games or so. Do you guys play them on the road soon? Because I thought you had mentioned, Ben, that they were playing Lower Mary. Was that Ridley? That was Ridley. That was Ridley. Lower Mary. Got yeah. got we went to that game at Lower Mary. We literally did. Yeah. That game yeah. was freezing. <laughs> yeah. It was so cold. Yeah. Today, was, today was horrible, too. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't well, imagine. I was out for like a little bit. And it seemed brutal. Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. that game today at Haverford or here? It was, it was at Garden Valley, but yeah. it was freezing. Yeah. It's not hitting weather. That's not fun. Not was the wind blowing in or out? In. Oh, that's, oh, that's no fun for anybody. <laughs> that sucks. That's no fun for anybody. Um, all right, let's real quick talk a little bit about college baseball. So I think, is this the first time we've had three people, like everyone committed on a team? I feel like there's always uh, two out of three. I think so, yeah. I think it is. All right, well, gentlemen, congratulations for that. Uh, we'll start with you, Mark. You're heading to Penn State Berks. Let's talk about the recruiting process and what made it feel like a good fit for you. So uh, with me, you know, uh, back my sophomore year, I had – Tommy John surgery, so I kind of lost a year of eligibility to play summer ball and kind of get out there and get seen. So I was kind of lost in the recruiting process. I didn't really know, I didn't have anybody to like guide me through it or kind of, you know, show me the ways. But um, my summer coach, you know, he gave me a team to play with. It's his team because uh, I didn't have a team. I couldn't try out anywhere. So our coach from our school, I played for him this summer. You know, we went through a couple tournaments. We had one showcase tournament where um, the Burks coach, Burks head coach, he saw me, he really saw what he liked, so he came over, he talked to me, he got me out for a visit, and then that was that. Everything fell in line with the school, it was beautiful, they had my attendant major that I wanted to do, all the facilities were new, so it's definitely going to be fun to play there. Is that a school you can do all four, or will you go up to Maine after two? Um, I can do all four there, but I think it depends on how I play, you know, if I play good and I have the opportunity to play maybe at the next level, even higher, then yeah, but I think definitely baseball will have a persuasion in what I end up doing. I think I could still sell the Penn State club team to him. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. It's like every, really want to. every show there's always like one guy who's thinking about like going to Penn State and I played for the club team there and I loved it so I, I always try to, uh, to keep recruiting. Uh, but what conference is Burson? Uh, so they're in, they were actually in the, there was, it was last year it was called the NEAC conference. It's the same conference, all the same teams. It used to stand for North a Northeastern Athletic Conference and now it's just the NEC which is the Northeastern Conference. Okay. 
Because I know Brandy Wine's going to be D3 next year. I right? think that's the conference. Is it? No, because they're the one with Keystone, aren't they? Is Keystone your guys' conference? I think Keystone's not. I think that's uh, okay. United something. United East, maybe? Jesus Christ, Brandy Wine has to play Keystone? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. All right. Uh, <laughs> tough transition to D3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, oh. All right, so Eddie, you're heading to DeSales. A lot of Delco guys there already. Have you yeah. uh, talked to any of them yet? Uh, I met I met Jeremy Stranix, you know him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a really nice kid. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to play with him. So I think, uh, who else is there? So, uh, Ryan Mike, McNichol. Mike Hooker's up no, there. No, not McNichol. Mike Hooker. Um, uh, Happersett's up there. Happersett is who, is who I was thinking of. Yeah. Frank. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, so how'd you end up uh, signing with the sales? Uh, I think exposure, just in front of college coaches, is like the main thing that you want to target when you're trying to get recruited. And they just saw me at a, a college camp or a college, like, prospect camp or whatever they call them and they liked what they saw so they reached out to me and then I visited them and they seemed like a good fit. So you think yeah. about anywhere else in the process as well or that was kind of the one you locked in on? That was kind of the one I locked in on. I love it. All right Jack we're heading to Stevenson which is Maryland? Yeah Maryland. Yeah how'd that happen? Uh, I just emailed them like a video and they liked it so then I got a text from them just to come up and like they, like, they never really watched me play in <laughs> person. <laughs> so I went down there and then I hid and stuff but um yeah, I love the campus, and uh, yeah, and then one um, our teammate Logan Hamilton too. He's still at Stevenson as well. So. He's in trying to do football and baseball. Yeah, he's trying to do yeah. both. So because I saw when, when 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 well, when the Garnet Valley account tweeted it out, they had a picture of him in a baseball yeah. and football. I'm like, I guess he's I guess he's doing both. Yeah, no, he's he's a good baseball player, just hurt. So yeah. he's gonna try to do both. I think. Might as well. I mean, you know, get out of football conditioning in the spring, yeah. <laughs> play baseball. <laughs> like, um, I think you know Ethan Marshall, right? He's yeah, play football yeah. there. And he's I used like, to play baseball with Ethan Marshall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah and he said he thinks he's, he's considering, at the very least, well. considering doing it. I texted him and told him to, to play baseball, too, so we'll see. Yeah, I mean, might as well try if you can yeah. do it. You know, a little. That'd be a fun group down there. Oh, so. yeah. Well, we always like to see, you know, the Delco guys who didn't, like, play together in high yeah. school, like, just go to school together, and, like, they probably hated each other until they became teammates. I wonder know? if he's playing on the Delco team, too. Delco League team? For the Blue Jays. I, I wonder, wonder if he's playing for It would make sense. Yeah, yeah, really might have to go up for you know, training camp <laughs> early. I'm trying to think of, did we talk to those guys about that? I don't think we talked about Delco. I think Sean Williams might be. Um, he's playing for Wayne. Is he? Sean's playing for Wayne. Oh, I didn't I know. He's on my team. I didn't even know about it. Or he might be playing for Wayne. Yeah. Um, I think about the other two. I think the other two might be playing Springfield. So really? Yeah, it could be yeah. a whole. Yeah. Get some uh, the sales chemistry before, or, yeah. or Stevenson. Um, Get the full Steve Trainer experience. Yeah. That's gonna be. <laughs> that'll, that'll prepare you for college. Um, <laughs> All right, so just overall, I guess my main question is for, for you guys to, you know, get back to the playoffs. I assume you guys are all part of the team last year. You know, based on that experience from last year, what do you guys think you have to do, either that you haven't been doing yet or that you, you know, have been doing already and build off of to get back there this year? I think we know what we have this year. You know, last year was kind of like a, at least for us, I think it was like a, you know, just see what we have. We were a very young team last year. We knew we were going to have a lot of fun, but we didn't really know how good we were going to be able to be. And um, I think we just kind of took that year to observe like what how we can take this team to the next level next year, which is now this year. Um, but I mean, like our lineup, like Eddie has said, it has no holes. Like one through nine, we can all hit the ball. We're gonna put runs up every game. It's just a matter of when. And like he said, you know, like on the pitching side, it's just like we have a, a ton of younger arms that can still come up and throw for us. But the main course is just gonna be if we can keep our three guys that we have as starters healthy, we're gonna be really. We should be really good and be able to compete at the highest level, possibly get into the deep run in the playoffs again this year. How excited are you guys for it to warm up and finally be able to really like swing it a little bit? Very excited. Yeah. Especially since our team is such a good hitting team, I think. Like, I mean, even like today, we, I mean, we only get two hits, but we scored seven runs. Like, I think, and I guess Perk Valley, I mean, we scored a ton. Like, we can really hit the ball, so I think when it warms up, I think we'll be a very good team. Yeah, the Haverford School game, too, was what, like 12-12 yeah. or 13-13 yeah, or something? I blew, yeah. I blew the game. We're up 12 Well, you didn't lose. So <laughs> yeah, no, we tied 12-12. Yeah. <laughs> well, you homered to take the lead at one point in that game, right? Yeah, they brought in the lefty. He wasn't like – we just kind of – we saw him pretty well. I'm just going to leave it at that. But um, <laughs> that was when we tied the game up. But, yeah. Um, all right, so I was I – was, Curious a little bit about just like the chemistry of this team because you guys do have obviously a good senior core but also a lot of young guys. So did they kind of like, you know, immediately come in and just like the team kind of felt like a uh, very close group or is that something you think kind of has to develop throughout the year? I think last year, you know, um, the younger guys kind of molded with the younger guys like Harrison and Cole, you know, they were freshmen, they were best friends, they knew each other well. Um, even like Chris, who's a 
junior now. He was a sophomore. Brady was a sophomore. Those younger guys kind of gel together, and you know, like some of the older guys kind of gel together from last year. Uh, so I feel like there was a little bit of a click in between of our team. But I feel like this year, you know, we all know each other very well. We're very close with each other. You know, I think our chemistry is like probably the best it's ever been for a Garden Valley team. And you know, that's going to be like the sky's going to be the limit for us if we can just stay together as a team and play together. We also have like a lot of guys that just go up and train all the time, like off the machine and stuff, and like on the weekends, like we don't practice on Saturday. I mean, I think everyone's basically there every Saturday. So I think it's really good how we do a lot as a team outside of just like normal practices, games, like going to Chipotle or whatever it is, just to stay as a team. And I mean, it really matters in baseball being together. It does, because once you get to the, the deep stages of the season, like everybody has talent, like especially in the playoffs, everybody has talent. So you got to have that edge. Kind of feels like this team's set up for a big second half surge. Like when the younger arms kind of start to get more experienced and get more comfortable, like not that you can't win games early, but like, feels like a team where you kind of figure out like who the right pieces are and then you know you just got to make the big dance and, and see what happens from there. When we get when we get the bats going we'll be really good like when we really start in because like I mean one through nine we really can hit and, like we have a lot of power throughout the lineup too so I think when that all starts clicking stuff we'll be we'll be really good. Yeah and to go along with that like once like because I, I can kind of speak on this a little bit because I am a pitcher but a lot of our guys during winter workouts this year were kind of like slow to start because of just like the way the weather was and everything and even the start of the season now, we haven't really been able to get our pitchers, our starting pitchers, deep into games because of the weather. You know, like I only threw three innings in that one game. Cody only threw two innings today because of the weather. Um, Joe really hasn't had a chance to go deep into a game yet. He's only been able to go like two, three innings here or there. But once the weather like warms up and we're actually able to like show what we have, like and our arms are be able to be fully loose and ready to go when we go to throw, I feel like that plus our ability to just absolutely like destroy the baseball will definitely play a role together. We can be a very big threat. Well, I know some of you guys are slow to get going because a little basketball run uh, that, that took us. How far did you guys go? Uh, we went to the district championship, which is the furthest in school history. We lost to Lower Marion, and then uh, we lost the first round of states. But the but team we lost to never been there. The team we lost right? to in the first round of states won the state championship. Was so. it? Who's your big rent? Uh, so York. York Central. Uh, oh really? They were good. They were big. Public schools, baby. I love yeah, it. Yeah, it was a six day. It was Parkland and. Oh okay. yeah, it was so, yeah, it was Parkland. It was a public school. It was a, it was a, it was a tough first yeah. round matchup. I mean, yeah. won this it was, it was a tough draw. draw. Yeah. yeah, I mean, at least you get to say that you you know played yeah. the best team. I mean, playing the district championship, playing at Temple was pretty cool. Uh, that's that's right. where they do it. Yeah, we played yeah. Temple. How was yeah. that court? Is it really nice? It was tough to shoot on. I'm not gonna lie, because like the backdrop, like the sand is high. You're not used to that. No. I mean, we like both teams shot really fast. Like yeah. I'll say I'm over married, but it's cool to be the first team to do something. Yeah, you know, it, was like, it was awesome. It was awesome. I mean, every game we beat the two seed, the three seed, the six seed, and we lost the one seed. So it's like it was yeah. pretty cool. And then Henderson was awesome the game before. So I mean, it was an amazing run. Does the Central League have playoffs for basketball? Yeah, you think they should for baseball too? I right? think they, they should have for baseball, to. Yeah. We've talked about this with so many other teams. And even if it's just like just one game, is was well, basketball eight or four teams? It's eight. Okay. I feel like it's eight now. It must. Yeah, it's yeah. Or no, I think it's six. Is it first two get a buy? Okay, that makes sense. It used to be. It was when I was in high school, just ancient. Um, But it was twenty sixteen. Yeah, if the top seed went undefeated, I think they just got a buy to the championship. Oh, really? And then there were just like the two and the three would play. And then that would be it. If not, it was four. So that's, that's cool to see they expanded it, though, especially yeah. in basketball. I think baseball would be great with six because you're rewarding the top two teams yeah. by they get to save their ace. You know, the other two teams have to get there. You go from there. But I don't know. I feel like we should just, like, raise enough money to just rent a field out and be like, hey, like, we're yeah. just going to do this. We're going to make a trophy. We're, like, I guess the best way to do it would probably be, like, the last week and then just have it end, like, a week before district so everybody can kind of, like, yeah. get their guys back. Um, yeah, I think six teams would be perfect though, because then you still give that big advantage of the yeah. first week, first yeah, game yeah. five for the eight. Like if you're the one seed and you lose to the number five, number two pitcher, like that's that's on you. Yeah. Like that, at some point, like the actual games uh, have to matter. Same thing. Were you a football guy as yeah, well? Any of you guys? No. Same thing with football. Just like I feel like you should be able to just play for a trophy. Yeah. If it's not the district one. Um, but all right. Well, uh, thank you guys for taking the time to come in today. Um, this, like we said, this was a home game for you guys. This yeah. studio right here. Uh, but best of luck throughout the year. We'll uh, be at some games soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you to the boys from the Valley for coming in. You know, I think Dollar Dog Day is one of the best ideas out there. I wish more teams did it. Uh, I, if they have a Dollar Dog Day in a big conference game, like the, the game at, of the right. week. I think. Right that, yeah. That's a, yeah. That's a. Uh, 
that's an easy game of the week. If they, they got a good one in this dollar dog night, I think a little disclaimer, like, again, we have said we can be bought like dollar dogs, I think is in a way like buying, like you want, you, you want to get us out there. Dollar dogs will get us out there. Uh, that's like, if you build it, they will come. You know, yeah. like if, if, if you build it, I if will you be grill there. it, we will come. If you, oh, I'm going to write that down. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> it, they will come. <laughs> Put that out of the matter. Um, yeah, this is one thing we've definitely talked about. So our guy from uh, from Five Star, James Grugan, um, you know, he's he's a Ridley area guy. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about how, you know, there's a lot of Ridley kids that either go to Bonner or the Haverford School. And they play on a Saturday. at, at uh, I think it's at Haverford, but I'm not positive. They, but they play on a Saturday. And he was like, we should do some like big tailgate type, you know, That'd be cool. Like, like pre like a live pregame show type thing. That so, yeah. actually be really awesome. Yeah. Just an idea. Just an idea. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Have a cool Saturday game like that. But uh, all right, let's get into my favorite part of every week. We got the power rankings here. Uh, so, sure. Ben, I think I think do you want to go back and forth here? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. All right. Here. Let me just pull up the uh, pull up the Instagram post because I have all the records on there because on the. Google Forms that we have all our stuff on. I just have the list. So as a resident of Strathaven uh, alum here, I will uh, – oh, wait, someone just commented, John T in Central League MVP on the power rankings. That's our guy. So I'm not going to sit here and argue that. Uh, that is our guy. Revenge tour. But, uh, yeah, so Strathaven, they're 6-0, 3-0 in the Central League. Um, you know, it's one of those things where, like, I, if, until they lose, they, they kind of have that spot, right? Like, you kind of have to think until until someone takes it from them. You know, they they uh, deserve to be up there. So uh, they're our number one team. You know, great one, too. Luke D'Ancona, Caden Schuster, an experienced lineup. They've seen it all. Uh, and, and you know, nothing nothing changing up there. No, absolutely. I think they're they're a very, very deserved spot at the top of the rankings. And um, it's looking like it's, it's going to be really hard to knock them off that. Yeah. All right, number two, what do you got? Uh, so we got – sorry, I'm pulling – oh, I went to the wrong power rankings. Here we are. All right. We got EA, uh, ten and one. Oh, I gotta find what what other games did they what games did they play? This so week? they uh, so they start the interact season on Tuesday. They play at Malvern, which it's a, I don't know if it's officially done, but I think it was supposed to be the first game on their new turf. Oh yeah, yeah, we were saying that. Okay, yeah, yeah. So um, that's you know, I mean, it doesn't get better than that, right? I feel no, like that's. Not at all. Even if we don't make it like the game of the week, like I would just go just because of the interact, yeah, right? That'd be, that'd be a nice one to go. You I'd said imagine, it was two I, yeah, I'd imagine we're probably going to get Tate Davis against Logan Carell is what I would think if if they're both ready to go. I don't know, but that's kind of what I would figure. Uh, so we get some dueling D1 southpaws. It's pretty enticing. That'd be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just definitely uh, – Definitely an idea here. Uh, number three, we're going with Bonner. So, you know, we, we moved them down. So they've only played one official game and they lost to Penn Charter. But we're kind of just, you know, our rankings are, are definitely a mix of, you know, what we see and what we think. Right. Like you kind of have to have a balance there. It's all a feel thing. So for us, you know, Bonner's played one game. Uh, you know, we got a, a rotation of all D1, D2 arms. We got a lineup where nearly in, the entire field is committed to playing college, uh, you know, last year made the state semis for the third straight season. But this week is is really going to be the week where they kind of show, you know, positively or negatively, like what they're, you know, they're going to be like. Because we kind of had them up there just based on potential the whole time. Yeah. But, you know, this week they're going to get started. They play uh, at Father Judge Monday. Archbishop Ryan, they, they play four games this week and three PCL games in three days. So Father Judge Monday, Archbishop Ryan Tuesday, and Devin Prep Wednesday. So all three of those guys, Johnny Ortega, Corey Sheridan, and uh, Rocco Calise are going to be thrown in right away, three straight games, and that's that's a quarter of your PCL season right there. What? Wait, you play, three you games? Play, you, play, you play 12 PCL regular season games. Really? Yeah. You play every team once. There's 13 oh. teams, you play every team once. That's high stakes. All right, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's going to be a big test for their pitching staff. If anyone can handle that, it's them especially mm-hmm. in three back-to-back days. Um, and we'll see. I think, like, it, again, they really haven't done much up north yet. Uh, but, you know, PCL slate, like, that's when you're going to get it going. I think, you know, now we're going to start to finally see, like, what this team really is. Yeah, that's a set the tone. Uh, speaking of a, a great three, three-headed monster in the rotation, what do you got for number four here? 
You got the Haverford School. Uh, another pretty good week for them. I know they had a tough game. Uh, they went and faced Gloucester Catholic. Um, they faced a really good arm there too, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They um they faced a Miami commit that's uh yeah that's that's at Gloucester Catholic. Uh, so they lost that game and their game against LaSalle. I think they were kind of just preparing their arms for like this week. Like they let a couple other guys get work that weren't that aren't going to be like starting you know major games. So, yeah. it, you know, it's one of those things I was texting with uh, a club baseball teammate of mine, Justin Machida, who went to LaSalle, and he was kind of like, you know, like talking about, about Haverford. And I was kind of like, yeah, like it's so hard to judge teams, you know, on, in some of these non-conference games. It's like the University of Florida. They lose every Tuesday and Wednesday, and then you usually do well, you know, when their big three are going. So They got swept this week, though. Yeah, they did. Against, uh, that's why I preface it with usually do pretty well. <laughs> usually, yeah. except yeah. this past week. Except one time a record. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> right, moving on to number five here. Uh, we're moving Marple back up. So Marple was six last week. They started at five. I, I just think that this is also because as we'll get to like the teams later on the list. But, you know, they won their two games. They took care of business. You know, they they beat up on Springfield. That was a great performance in the Radner game. Uh, you know, listen, I, I know that the records might – say about Ratner, but Austin Havertine is a top 10, maybe so eventually you know, top five arms. So I think that, you know, being able to to lock in down three, two in the seventh and, and come back and win that game shows a lot of guts. So uh, I, I like them back in the top five. Absolutely. Yeah. That's that. I'm, I'm completely good with that. I think, you know, that offense showed uh, a lot of resilience bouncing back after a tough outing against, you know, one of the best pitchers in the County. Um, but yeah, yeah, they, I, I like them in the top five. And one thing I wanted to add real quick: Jack Mahalik looked really good against uh, against Radner in that game, and it was a nice yeah. rebound. You know, because Strathaven on opening day put up four in the first. Uh, I don't have anywhere earned, but put up four in the first uh, to settle in. I think he went maybe like five innings, one run in this game, uh, one earned run in this game. Good. So good performance by him here. Um, so we flip five, five and six. So tell us about six. Well, six uh, moving down a spot here. Lower Marion, uh, they got. They, they obviously we talked about earlier. They lost that you know high scoring game to uh, Conestoga. Uh, it's it's going to knock them down a little bit, but I mean, still, when you have a guy like Van Wilner, like I think there's at least the potential to, you know, there's there's a potential that and there's the potential there and just you know the talent that we know exists to keep them in the rankings. I mean, right now we're sitting at one and two, one and one in the league, which again isn't like the most impressive thing, but another team that just we know they're good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, uh, moving on to number seven here. Garner Valley moves up a spot. Um, you know, I think that the main reason we're moving them up is just because of what we saw from Nick Gordon. You know, it, I felt like keeping them at eight was, you know, reasonable given what we knew from their pitching, but he was excellent. Uh, the lineup, they posted some stats of, like, what their players have done so far this year, and it, it's just been incredible how they oh, swung yeah. the bat, especially, you know, cold weather. Like, you, you'd think usually, right, with hitting season, like, it's only getting better, you know. So that's uh, so that's something that's been been great to see. And you know, with with Nick and with Mark and Jack Krautzel and you know Cody Weiss, like they have some arms that they're they're just kind of figuring things out, you know, like figuring out who goes in what role. Uh, but if the bats are like that consistently throughout the year, then they're going to be a uh, a tough team to beat. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, number eight. What do we got? Got the rid. Uh, the <laughs> we got Ridley. Uh, another you know Chris Kimmel doing his thing. Another big win, uh, another big win this past week. Just, you know, looking solid, like just really looking like a t another tough team. Uh, I know we've talked about tribe mentality. <laughs> like it's it's out there in full force right now. You know what would be fun is uh, is going to the Ridley and Pencrest game because they both self-proclaim themselves as psychopaths. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> yeah, that when, do, a, when do they play? Because that would be a very – Imagine like sticky face. <laughs> They're just gonna both both, uh, <laughs> both gonna bring the intensity. Let's see. So that is um that is Wednesday, April seventeenth at Pencrest. Okay. That's yeah, there's that, definitely two very like groups, like two groups of like pretty intense yeah. people and like what what we've met them or like from what we've gotten from meeting them. Like that's gonna be yeah, also kind of a little like, tippy. As as close as Ridley and Pencrest are, like I never think of that as a rivalry. No, you know, no, you really it, never do. Like I considered, you know, at Strathaven, Pencrest's biggest rival, but like, you know, rivals with Springfield, right? Rivals with Marple, like Ridley's close. You know, it's like, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't really feel like a big uh, rivalry. But who knows? Maybe this year. I guess it's a little more so because like Pencrest is a five A, aren't they? 
Yeah, that's true. So they're yeah. Play. So like they're probably you know I feel like the five A schools kind of like because they play each other more in pretty much yep. every sport kind of it's good gravitate point, yeah. towards having rivalries with each with each other. All right. Well, last but not least, we kind of foreshadowed it, but Pencrest will be our number mm-hmm. nine. Uh, they deserved it. You know, I I don't think we were ever un, unreasonable like not having them in before this, but you know after this week we felt like it was uh you know it was it was a no brainer to have them in. Uh, I, I would not be surprised if by this time next week, they're, they're even higher on the list. You know, they, they have a chance to play number five and number one on this list on Monday and Wednesday, and they kind of control, you know, where, where they move in this rankings, right? Like, I don't know. Um, I think, I think Gavin Brown's going to pitch Wednesday against Luke. And then I think Monday would probably be the Pagliacetti, right. And they say that's usually their other one or it could yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it could be Josh pitching if they need him to. I know he typically starts, but whatever it is, you know, these guys are in their spot. They're, they are, without a doubt, a top-nine team right now. And, you know, kind of the way our rankings work is we kind of typically like to have, like, the mentality of we really don't move teams down if they don't, like, if you want to say deserve to. Like, teams, yeah. that keep, teams, teams that keep winning, right? Like, even if, you know, you might think – that Pencrest has looked better than some of these teams so far this year. It's like, well, hey, like, you know, Ridley's took care of their business, right? Garner Valley won their last two games. So it's like, I feel good about just, you know, th- they deserve to be in. Yeah. Yeah. No, they deserve to be in. And I think like the other teams deserve the spots they got uh, just based off on like what they did. I know Pencrest has looked very impressive. Um, but uh, this week is going to be the week that they, you know, we really see, you know, is this team legit, legit? Yeah. I don't know if this is a bold take. Uh, I think there's a very real chance that either Stoga or O'Hara is on this list. I mean, O'Hara has two of the best wins. It was just one of those things where we just want to see, you know, if they can do it again, right? Was it just a good weekend or is it a good team? And and that's what I'm excited to find out. I think I think it could be could be a good team, and they could. And I I commented this on like my my personal account on it. I was just like, you know, Stoga and O'Hara absolutely were in conversations on on if they were going to be on it this week. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think those are probably like. 10 and 11 right now. Yeah. Um, and then beyond that, I think Gavin, like Gavin Ray, like if he does what he can do, uh, Carol's probably, you know, in that 12 ish area yeah. there. Yeah. And then, you know, from there we'll see who else steps up, but like, yeah, uh, if the, those teams are a couple good ones away from cracking the rankings. Yeah. So originally we kind of had this, uh, had this designated, uh, as a, as a kind of previewing upcoming games, but we've really covered all of them. So the main thing I just want to say is, PCL really gets going. The Interac officially starts. So Episcopal will play at Malvern. That is the first, uh, supposed to be the first game on Malvern's new turf. So I, I actually live in Malvern, so I will probably be at that game, whether it's the game of the week or not, just because started the Interac. I believe the Haverford School plays Springside Chestnut Hill. Let me double check that. So they, according to this, they don't start their Interac until next Tuesday at Malvern. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so it looks like. But also on this game changer, there's no Chestnut Hill game. So let me real quick just check their uh, their Instagram because I would imagine they probably will like yeah you know, they would start the interact on the same day. But let's check that real quick. So this would be um, yeah. So they will play Penn Charter on Tuesday, and that will be at uh, at Penn Charter for their first interact game of the year. And that's the team that knocked them out last year. Yeah, yeah. So that that will be a big one, kind of get a little revenge game maybe. Yeah, so I guess uh, Chestnut Hill will probably play Germantown Academy for that first yeah, game there. Yeah. Um, so for the PCL, as we mentioned, Carroll has a has a big week. They start with St. Joe's Prep. They will be playing that game uh, on the road on Tuesday. They'll come back on Thursday for their second game. I'm excuse me, no, they'll come back on Wednesday. They'll come back on Wednesday for their second game at Roman Catholic. Uh, and then O'Hara is a Saturday 11 a.m. game because it's a makeup. Oh, okay. That's an interesting so we have the uh, the media Little League opening ceremony, but that's at nine. So I, I think right. I, I think we can make it over there. That's it. That looks well. like it's at Carroll. I mean, like we said, it's one of the three, you know, PCL on like Delco on Delco PCL games. So yeah, yeah, very rare, very occurrence. We're getting them early because Bonner and Carroll is, I think, that following Monday. So um, oh, shit, yeah. I, uh, a couple, couple big games this week in the Central League. So Strathaven Pencrest uh, is a big one on Wednesday. It's supposed to be Gavin Brown. And Luke D'Ancona. Pencrest also plays at home against Marple on Monday. Uh, I think Garnet Valley Ridley is going to be a really fun game. I believe yeah, for sure. Is Wednesday. That is Wednesday. Uh, so that's another fun one as well to get things going. But you know, it feels like I, I don't I don't know how to phrase this. Like the Interac and and PCL games mean more than the Central League because the PCL is twelve game regular season. 
Interact is 10. So yeah, the fact yeah. that you get 16, you know, like like EA and Malvern, you know, they play each other twice, but like that's a big swing in the standings already to start the year, you know. Yeah, that's uh definitely like a little like a lot less margin for error, I would say with those two leagues. I think that that obviously makes each game like there's a little bit more pressure to win. Um but I don't know. I'd argue that like all are definitely still of like very equal importance. Yeah. Uh, so we promise we will get back into college baseball soon. It's just been so hectic with the start of high school. Uh, so this week we are subbing out college for minor league. So we want to real quickly just kind of run through some of the guys uh, from Delco that are playing minor league baseball. We actually have 13 guys from Delco or we'll say Delco slash the central league because we yeah. got some Stogan Harriton guys, but you know, as we kind of stick by with our, our mission statement here, like they might not be Delco, but they play Delco baseball, right? Close so like, yeah. That's kind of the goal. Uh, so I'm just going to go in order. I wrote this article. If you want to check this uh, written article out, it's a much you know lengthier version of what we're about to do here. But, you know, we'll start with Kevin McGonigal. I mean, I would probably say at this point, you know, maybe the most popular, you know, when people think of Delco baseball, that's like the name. Yeah. yeah. Him and probably number two on this list. Uh, so Kevin got drafted last year out of Bonner, 37th overall, by the Detroit Tigers. Uh, he was originally committed to Auburn, but he ultimately decided to sign with the Tigers and begin his pro career. He got a little bit of time last year uh, in rookie ball for uh, the, the rookie ball Tigers, and he eventually made his way up to low A. And his numbers were good, man. In, in low A, he hit 350 with an OPS over 900 uh, in 48 plate appearances. And I think it's a very, very realistic chance that we see him make it up to high A, which is Western Michigan, by the end of the season. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think he's, he's got a good shot. You know, just keep everything. One, stay healthy. Two, just stay consistent with everything. I, I think he's got a good shot. Yeah, I would say at his age, he's 19. Listen, I'm not. I'm never going to bet against the kid, but it might be a stretch to see him in double A this year. But I think it's, you know, it's, it's in the realm of possibilities. I think it's unlikely, but it's possible. Yeah, I agree. All right, uh, let's move on to a guy who is starting out the season in double A. That's Kyle Verbitsky, a friend of the program. If you haven't yes, checked out our interview with him yet, I highly recommend it. Um, he was incredible, just really opened up. Probably, our, I think it was our longest interview. It must have been almost an hour. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, he really just, you know, really went in depth on on what being a minor league baseball player is like. Uh, so that was, I think, back in, I want to say January. Uh, but Kyle will enter, enter his third full season uh, at the professional level this year. He was drafted at Penn State. He went to Episcopal. He was originally an Oakland A, but he was traded in a deal that actually sent former Philly Cole Irvin to the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, he was the team MVP for the high A Aberdeen Ironbirds last year. He made the the Bowie Bay Sox as the double A team for the Orioles. And Ben, I guess the main thing I want to say here is that it's so exciting that he's in an organization like Baltimore where it's so loaded in position players, but not quite as much as pitching. And what do you know? And he's, you know, he's working in, in the bullpen right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really cool. Like, and uh, just a very good fit for him. And I, I know when we talked to him, he talked about kind of like all the stuff they're doing to develop their pitchers. And just like, I don't know, it's 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 a very good, you know, and he's got a chance to go. It's a team that's going to compete. They're, if he's in the bullpen, they'll be looking for guys to step up. You know, it's a it's a very good situation for him right now, which is really awesome. He, he feels like a guy that could kind of have like the Matt Strom, like Jeff Hoffman, kind of like long release. Yeah, yeah. Kind of put him in a high leverage you can do that as well. But a guy that, you know, I, it doesn't seem like he's getting that many um, many starts. Let's see. So it looks like last year – so he's actually – so he started 15 games and he came in relief for 10. So maybe almost like a like a Mike Lorenzen role from last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. You need to start, I'll start. You need me to – you know, maybe like early career Ranger Suarez, you know. <laughs> because, well, because in the playoffs, man, like roles don't exist. You no, go and no, no. you know. Uh, all right, let's move on here. Another Episcopal guy. So Mark Washington Jr., someone that was a little before our time at the high school level. Uh, he was drafted out of college in 2017, so he must have been like a 2013 or 14 ish grad. Yeah, yeah. But um, so he went to Lehigh. He got drafted there. He spent the first seven years of his career with the Dodgers. But for the first time, he will be wearing new colors this year. He will be a Houston Astro this year. He is on the uh, Sugarland Space Cowboys, which is the best name in professional sports. That is an interesting one. I remember when they used to be the Skeeters. That was kind of a cool one too. Yep. But like, yeah, that's what, is that double? What is that? What, what level is that? Triple A. Okay, mm -hmm. that's 
That's such a cool like space cowboy. So is so cool. Um, but yeah, I I would say for my money's worth, he is. So there's no one in Delco that's current, or no one from Delco that's currently in the big leagues. I would say he's got the best shot because last year in AAA for the Dodgers, he had a 3.69 ERA, and you know, new organization, maybe he's able to break through there. Team up with uh, Westchester Henderson alum Chaz McCormick would be pretty cool. But um, yeah, he's uh, he's been pitching in there their bullpen for them. Uh, we'll stay in the Houston Astros world. We got Ethan Pecco. So Ethan's a Ridley grad. He, uh, he went to Towson to play his college baseball. He got drafted by the Astros the end of the sixth round last year. He is on the Fayetteville Woodpeckers. The Woodpeckers. Yeah, that is very a, unique name. Minor League Baseball has been going crazy with the names. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. awesome. Yeah. Um, we got some great Ooh. ones on here. But basically, Ethan, last year – he, uh, he had a three ERA in his two appearances in rookie ball. Uh, didn't quite go as well in low A, but it was only 12 innings. I think his ERA was around like seven-ish, so that's not really a concern. Uh, I actually, I'm going to look it up because I, I think he started opening day, which was over the weekend because I'm actually buddies with his his uh, his brother, Mark, who uh, I went to college with. So let's see. Did he pitch yesterday? Uh, looks like he let up two or three runs, but he struck out six and two and a third. All right. All right. So that's, that's a good start to the – of the year overall, I would say. Uh, pretty cool right. logo they got there. Yeah, the Woodpecker. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, we'll go to Chris Clark. So he was also in the draft class this year. He was drafted out of Harvard. He uh, actually threw the hardest pitch at the MLB Combine. He threw 98.5 miles an hour. That's cool. uh, he was drafted by the uh, the Angels in the fifth round. He was immediately sent to low A. No rookie ball for him. He went straight to low A, which is not uncommon for you know older guys like straight out of college. So he struck out 22 hitters in 19 innings. He will begin with the low A, uh, the Inland Empire 66ers. Uh, and he will hope to what work his way up. What the was the 66? 66? I don't know. It's California, so I'll, uh, I'm not sure. But maybe yeah. okay. I'll have to look it up. Uh, the high the uh, high A team for the Angels is the Tri-City Dust Devils. Ooh. So that's a that's cool, a cool one. one. Yeah. All right, uh, let's move on here to our next player. We got a lot of pitchers on this list. We'll go Tom Kane. Uh, he's an O'Hara guy. He was drafted out of Maryland by the San Francisco Giants. Uh, he was drafted in the 19th round. So he originally went to uh, RCSJ Gloucester, uh, Roan County, South Jersey, but he went to Maryland. Uh, and and truth be told, and he'll probably be the first to tell you, like the results weren't quite there for him at Maryland, but the stuff was, and yeah. that is what – MLB teams look for in like the 19th round. Like the Giants always fix pitchers. Look what they're doing with Jordan Hicks, right? They're actually making him into a starter, right? So I think the it was a high upside pick, and he will be starting his uh, his season off with the San Jose Giants, which are the uh, the low A team. And listen, if you're not if you're a lefty and you throw a 95 mile an hour sinker, man, somebody can help you figure out how. To <laughs> There's a lot of stuff to work with there. Yeah, guys, yeah, a. Uh... 90, 95 sinker from the left side. It's good. Good way to have a job. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Here we got a position player. Uh, Nate Furman, uh, friend of the program. He came on. He was actually the third ever episode of this show. He he came on while he was in the Cape Cod League, and I did not know until I started preparing for the interview that he was draft eligible because he was only sophomore, but he was old for his grade. I think he was like uh, way way back in the day. Uh, so he was he was twenty one like at the time of that draft, like going into his junior year of college. So he got drafted in the fourth round by the Guardians. Uh, so it was cool, you know, getting to talk to him right before the draft process because, like, you know, he's a very humble guy, but, like, he knew he was going to get picked. He didn't know where. Yeah, yeah. Like, he knew he was going to get picked. So uh, so that was pretty cool. But he uh, – so he had an interesting season because he started with the low A Lynchburg Hellcats, hit 328. His OPS was over 860. But when he got moved up to the high A Lake County captains, he kind of struggled a bit. He had around 230. OPS was uh, was around 600. I will say the, the very positive thing to take out of this is that even in the um, the high A struggles, he only struck out 35 times compared to 30 walks in 68 games. Like he's still getting on base. He's still seeing that's the good. ball. Yeah, that's good. You know, when, he was, um, when he was in high A, you know, it was even better. He also stole 37 bases last year and was only caught five times. Hey, well, base running threat. That's, I mean, I obviously like, you know, going up the levels for pitching, it, it, it can be tough just, you know, because it just obviously gets better. Um, but I don't know. I think it's uh, the strikeout to walk ratio is very encouraging. That is something where it shows that, you know, like you said, he's seeing the ball and 
I think those numbers will probably turn around uh, the longer he or the more at bats he gets to see. And then yeah. you combine that with the speed, like that's it's big time. Yeah, and you know he'll uh, have a whole season of high A. He's still, he's uh, back on the captains this year, so uh, get a full year of getting to adjust to that. All right, let's move on here. Uh, so we have another uh, member of the Angels organization, another pitcher, Jack Kahanowitz. So I uh, I actually faced him in high school. So in our playoff game against Harrington, he was a sophomore, I was a senior. So at that point, he was already committed to UVA, and his so he threw i mean he threw hard obviously he was throwing like upper 80s but man like there's a lot of guys you know especially him in his sophomore year there's yeah. a lot of guys that threw comparable velo he has he had the best stuff that i've i've probably personally ever faced and even as a sophomore like his his curveball just fell off the table and i think i think i came up with a runner on second no outs i think i like i think i like grounded out like to second and like got the runner over so i'm like you know what i didn't strike out that was, yeah. uh, I was <laughs> Pretty happy with that result, uh, but he was um, he was actually drafted out of high school. So he was drafted out of his senior year at Harrison. He was picked in the third round of the draft by the Angels. He spent last year playing for those uh, very same Tri City Dust Devils. There they are, and he actually earned his way up to the Double A Rocket City Trash Pandas. Oh my God! Which is they the got best memes there. The Rocket City Trash Pandas. Uh, it's they have a, a raccoon as the trash panda. mascot. Uh, it's it's so cool, but uh, he so Kahanowitz kind of had a similar uh, 2023 to Nate Furman. So, so Jack started in uh, in low A, had a 1.52 ERA over five starts. He was fantastic. When he got called up to Double A, things didn't go quite as well. He had 16 starts. His ERA was around six. Um, but now he'll get to have you know that year under his belt. He's still a young guy, right? Like he was drafted out of high school. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. He's somebody that. Uh, we'll, we'll get to start the whole year in Double A with Rocket City and try and build off that. Uh, so I think that's you know going to be good for him as he continues to climb the ranks. And you know I hate to say this, but like Angels organization in terms of major league talent, like just isn't really strong pitching wise, which is good for him to potentially yeah. you know, find his way in there. Yeah, another where it's just opportunity for him to work him work his way up. Yep. All right, uh, we are going to go to probably the most interesting player on this list is Andrew Bechtold. So Andrew's a Garnet Valley guy. He was drafted out of Chipola Juco by the uh, by the Minnesota Twins back in 2017. So he spent the first, what's it, six or seven years of his career trying yeah. to find the best way to become a major league third baseman, right? Like that's the dream. Last year uh, with the Twins, uh, I believe it was either double or triple, I think it was triple A. With the Twins triple A team, he actually started to pitch a little. He threw, I think, maybe like, 15 innings, 20 innings. Uh, it, it didn't go very well, but he was trying to be a two-way player. Now he had a full offseason. He signed <laughs> with the Blue Jays, and he's just a pitcher now. That's so sick. <laughs> like, that is so sick. I saw him at a cent- – uh, I, I, not personally. I saw a video of him throwing, like, sinkers at, like, upper mid to upper oh, nine. Oh, yeah, he was chucking. I'm like, you know, maybe he just realized, like, hey, like, I'm just not – you know, there's no path for me to be a major league hitter. Might as well try and see if I can stay in pro baseball a little longer. So – uh very, very cool for him. Um, and he is going to be teammates with another guy on this list, Brendan Little. So the only player on this list that has made the majors, Brendan Little, went to Conestoga. He was drafted by the Chicago Cubs. He actually uh, played in, I believe he had one appearance in the 2022, like end of the season for the Cubs. Yeah, you uh, say he had, like, he had like two-thirds of an inning, right? Yeah, like two-thirds of an inning. Uh, and he That's a show, will, be, will be teammates with Bechtold on the AAA Buffalo Bisons. Uh, that was the field used during COVID when Toronto couldn't go out of the country. Uh, oh, so yeah. um, Little has been with the Cubs organization for a while, but he was actually traded uh, for our favorite player, Cash Considerations, to, uh, <laughs> to the Blue Jays. Uh, so Little spent all of his last year with the Iowa Cubs, which is also AAA, and he will look to find his way back up to the show. All right, the only player on this list that I've ever been a teammate with, I believe, is Billy Corcoran. Billy Corcoran won me a state championship uh, in Legion when I was 15. He there threw the game and hit the walk-off. So, thanks, Billy. Much appreciated. Uh, <laughs> he uh, He's the only player on this list that's undrafted. So, he was undrafted coming out of Pitt. He was actually drafted out of high school by the Rangers, but decided to go to Pitt uh, on a scholarship as, as um, you know, an alternative. He had a resurgent 2022 year at Pitt. He had some injuries that he dealt with throughout his Pitt career, uh, but he ended up having a great year there. He signed right after the season with the Diamondbacks. He pitched a little uh, in 2022 in rookie ball, but really last year was the start of his pro career. 
So he was pitching with the uh, Visalia Rawhide of Loe. Uh, right. he, he did very well for them. He got the uh, the call up to the High A Hillsboro Hops, which I think is maybe Oregon. And I'm not positive. Somewhere in North Carolina. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like I saw Oregon. Um, Somewhere so they have beer, I would assume. Yeah, and uh, 476 ERA. That's a nice Delco little, little Blue Root uh, ERA right there. <laughs> Terrible uh, track. He's, he was Terrible mostly track. starter in college, but he's – uh, in 30 appearances in the big or in, in professional baseball, he's only started seven. So it seems like the Diamondbacks won him more as a as a reliever. Uh, so he will be starting with the the Hillsboro Hops again and uh, hoping to way work his way up to the Amarillo Sod Poodles. That's I got another good one. I got nothing on that one. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Sod Billy Murphy, guy uh, Ridley area, but Malvern Prep. Speaking of. Chris Chris Newell is next up on the list. Speaking of Malvern Prep guys, Chris Newell was uh, drafted by the Dodgers in the 13th round of the 2022 MLB draft. Uh, he got to play in Omaha, where, where he honestly, he in that season, he didn't have incredible numbers, but in Omaha, he tore it up offensively and defensively for that Virginia team that also had that uh, the Dippin' Dots guy, Stephen Shock. Oh, yeah. So that was uh, that was fun. But he got drafted at high school with the Cardinals. Same thing as Billy. He decided to just go to college. He went to Virginia. So he started with the rookie ball team very briefly in 2022. Uh, but last year he started with the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes, and oh, yeah. that's the uh, the low A team for the Dodgers, and he just mashed. He hit 312. Yeah, he His OPS was 1088. He had 14 homers in just 41 games. So he got called up to the uh, the high A Great Lakes Loons. And for the Loons, he came back down to earth a little. He wasn't terrible. Like, he hit in the 220s, but his OPS was 750. He still hit seven homers to put him over 20 for the year. So it's still, you know, a successful um, campaign overall, hitting 20 homers in a season. So he will start with the Great Lakes Loons, and he will try and find himself – uh, at the double A level, which is Tulsa, I want to say the Drillers, maybe. Yeah, yeah, Tulsa's the Drillers. If they, if they've kept the same name, it is. There, yeah, there's so a the very yeah. lot. There's those names from minor league teams change all the time. But I'm pretty sure it's been the Tulsa Drillers. Yeah. I was talking with somebody the other day. I forget who it was. Um, about you know, Chris Newell's a Newtown Square guy. Can you imagine him on that Marple State Championship team? Oh my God. I would have been like they like uh, a middle of the order with Alden Mathis, who's going to get drafted again. Chris Newell already drafted. Luke Zimmerman was the best player alive that year. Luke Cantwell, like that oh team God. would have been even more stacked than than they already were. Jeez. That, man, oh my man. God. Yeah. Insane. All right. Last up on the list here, we got our Philadelphia Phillies guy. That's right. We got Jim Haley, uh, Bonner guy, Penn State guy, really the Delco dream, playing Bonner, Penn State, and for the Phillies. <laughs> but he spent the majority of his minor league career with the Tampa Bay Rays. He was drafted on the 19th round in 2016. He played, you know, his entire career up until 2023 with the Rays. Got to play for the Durham Bulls, which I'm, I'm sure was pretty cool. You yeah, know, got it. That, that movie. Um, so he grew up in that organization, but he left. He came home to play for the Phillies. Last year he was uh, with the AAA Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. He had not a bad year, 253, 740 OPS. He had 11 home runs for them. Uh, it took a little bit of time into the offseason, but he would sign back with the Phillies for this year. He will be beginning the year in AA Reading, but I'd imagine they're going to kind of try and get him back to AAA as soon as he's up to speed, you know, because he wasn't really, um, you know, with the organization until I think February, maybe. Or yeah, even yeah. That makes sense. Uh, but yeah. But that's our minor league recap. Uh, I, I'm definitely planning on doing something this year, like a little column, just, you know, it's kind of, you know, even slideshows on Instagram, just pointing, you know, out what guys are doing, doing all the research and, uh, and getting that out there. But that's all for our minor leagues. And I, I really hope some of these guys either play maybe like the blue rocks or at like, if Kyle plays, I'm sure they play Reading this year at some point. Yeah. Yeah. You'd think so. That'd be cool. Like get a couple of these guys coming over here and like playing locally. Um, just because, I mean, it's going to be tough for a lot of the West Coast guys, but some of these other guys in the organizations up here, it'd be cool to see them you know, be, be around and be in the area. All right, last but not least, we will wrap the show up with just a little bit of Phillies talk. Um, you know, they took two out of three from the Nationals this weekend. It was one of those, like, good series win, not great. You know, it kind of sucked that uh, they couldn't, you know, get that last one there. But, you know, I know the Nationals are a bad team. Still an NL East game. They, they like to, you know, try and spoil us as much as possible. Um, but, you know, I've, I liked um, what we saw from the pitching staff. You know, I think that Aaron Noel was fantastic on Friday. 
I think that uh, Ranger was, once again, fantastic. He had one bad pitch to Joey Gallo that he hit out. Good for Joey, 200th home run. Uh, Chris Sanchez was good but not efficient. You know, he had a lot of yeah. long innings early on. And uh, I think that we're really going to figure out what we got with Spencer Turnbull coming up this week to uh, to see, you know, if, if this rotation is going to need any any other reinforcements or if he's going to be the guy for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's a uh... – I'm a little bit more worried about the offense. Um, I think the pitching is done okay. I think, like, you know, Nola will settle in. You know, he, he had a blow-up start. Wheeler's Wheeler. Ranger is Ranger. He kind of does what he does. Even, like, Sanchez, you know, that stat line's kind of what you normally get from him. He's not – hasn't ever really been particularly, like, efficient. Um, but, you know, gets the job done. And then, you know, Turbo – it looks like there's a lot of promise there as that fifth guy. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the offense is really, I, there's just a couple of those guys just look lost, man. It, we it's we have a center field problem. We absolutely have a center. Yeah. field. This, yeah. is the, this is the Mike Trout year. Uh, no, maybe. Um, no, but I mean, the problem is like everybody can whine about Rojas, including myself as much as we want, but Pache, like how much better is Pache really? Like, I think it, it, at some point they might have to consider Marsh as the everyday center fielder and Witt as the everyday left fielder. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, like, and Pache is, at least hitting-wise, probably significantly better. Like, But, like, also not good. Like, you no, know not good, but better, at least. Like, we we need – he's at least, like, a major league level hitter. It, yeah. It, Johan Rojas just, like – great defender is not a major league hitter right now. And it's just being exposed as such. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, give it maybe not you know, give it like maybe a little bit longer, but the, I don't know how much longer you can justify having him out there, especially when like Brandon Marsh is good enough in center field. Like you're going to lose a little bit in defense, but, uh, uh, it's better than having an automatic out at the bottom of your lineup. For sure. Um, so I real real quick just want to talk about the Bryce Harper three home run game, which was sick. I mean, it's it's you know, he's been here what since the start of the 2019 season and it hadn't yep. happened yet. You know, he's had two a couple of times, but just to do that, uh wearing the shisty, it was freezing. <laughs> and, and the fact that it was a grand slam was oh, so yeah. cool. So cool. That was really cool. That was that was that was a good one. It's Hopefully he's another guy who starts to get going. It seems like he is now. So yeah, uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't know where this ranks on his best Phillies moments. I mean, Bedlam at the Bank is one. I would probably argue the walk off Grand Slam might be two. You know, the the home run in that first World Series at bat at home was was pretty cool. Oh yeah, uh, so many uh, so many cool moments. But you know, that one right there was uh, was 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 pretty awesome. For sure, for sure. His, his career highlight reel is going to be nuts. <laughs> It's that's gonna be like a, it's gonna be a movie. Yeah, it'll probably be like a little documentary or something. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much all we got on this uh, this episode today. You know, we got a, we got a very exciting week ahead of us. You know, a lot of like I have I have a feeling that the power rankings, whether it be new teams in, teams dropping out, teams switching, are just gonna look a lot different next week. Yeah, yeah, I could see. I, I think like you know we're finally getting just like significant games and i think this past week it was supposed to be that way and the rain kind of screwed us over but the, this week is like we're getting into it now and so we're going to see a lot of teams play and we're going to see like who's really what um i'm excited for it i'm excited to you know get a little chaos going and and it's you know it's not usual for teams to have their pitching depth tested like this so early yeah yeah for sure that's it's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting to see, especially with a lot of teams like Bonner. We talked about Pencrest is uh, they're already kind of in it. I would say, considering they play today or they played today, Monday, Wednesday. Um, yeah, just a lot of tests. We're gonna we're gonna see what people are made of here, for sure. All right, as always, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, shout out producer Rob, you know, for help, hooking us up for the two yeah. interviews. Uh, you know, it was tough with, with traffic and, and those guys coming from the game. We just didn't really have time to do like the whole episode in our, our certain amount of studio time. But thanks, everybody, for tuning in for this uh, probably our longest episode in show history. But as always, thank you for listening. We will see you next week.